Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live stream tonight. The TOV live stream, also soon to be probably known as the TOV podcast. It is Valhalla time. Valhalla time! How's everybody doing tonight? We welcome all your hellos and comments there all over the internet. We appreciate it. And so tonight is update time with talking about everything pertaining to Hero Escape, Age of Annihilation. And my goodness, what a week it was. We have a lot to cover because we didn't cover last Wednesday because we're not doing this two times a week anymore. We are doing this just one time on Sunday evenings. And I'm Ryan, Tales of a How. Above me, Jeremy, the SLM. Call it. I think I said that wrong, but you, 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 you know what I mean. And Joe Crazy, who is Joe Crazy, and Jason Rutherford, Rocker Rock Robotics, and right here by my side is MK Plus Ultra Ben. But he is having some technical difficulties, so hopefully he will be joining us, and we'll get him. Like it's switching around here, um, so we should get him soon. It's 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 a work in progress. It always is a work in progress here. And anyway, we are going to get started with talking about first off the uh, Discord dumps. But of course, uh, Ian Kemp says, "What up, dudes? What up, Ian? Welcome to the stream tonight." And what up? Just before we get started with uh, with all the Discord dumps uh, this week, uh, how was you guys' week? Good week. Good week. Good week for you all. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, great week. mine was Not mine was why I I mine was great. <laughs> I had, had some crazy stuff happen, so you know, good stuff, crazy good stuff, crazy good stuff. But, you know. I'm just taking. I'm just giving myself a, a minute's worth of breath to allow Ben to try and connect again and again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm giving the man as much time as I possibly can, you know. Um, but yes, and currently and for those who are might be listening to this on an audio version podcast sometime in the future this will be the first time we actually mention that um that it is an audio podcast in the in the future so i might be describing things a, a little bit better um depending on whoa okay um so and so and so that's an exciting thing how that's kind of coming together because of all you people watching and and listening and thinking, yeah, we want to listen to this. It's like, great. Yeah, it just, hmm. It's happening because of you. It, oh, this is your you guys, fault. All, because all you guys, it's just. It's, Ryan's stressing because you guys want something. <laughs> <laughs> it's too Maybe. much. It's way too much. Anyway. So <laughs> I guess uh, we will just get started with uh, the Discord stuff then. Here. And we're trying to get Ben on, but I am just going to first start with Monday's uh, what well, Encarmine showed us M -m -m last last Monday. A new faction, a new faction. And here, let me get this and make sure I get popping up in the right thing here. Do -do. Uh -uh, I gotta find it. I gotta find it. All right. Yeah, so this is a, a new a new faction, a new syndicate. A new faction, a new syndicate even. Now, if you know that reference, because that's a very old pop culture reference, comment either on the live stream or <laughs> in the description below on YouTube. Because if you know if you know that character, and guys don't say its name, if you know. I think you gave it away by saying its name. Hmm? <laughs> I didn't. No, I didn't say. I said it's because I'm not gonna say what oh, okay. type type of thing. Because I actually don't know it. So, and I, I I did terrible voice acting for that. Anyway, okay. And comment says, designers notes a day fourteen. Dryon is that Dryon or Dryan? I would assume. I think it's supposed to refer to Dryan. 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 Yeah. It says Ryan there. I'm happy. Uh, Dryan, <laughs> Lifeborn Order, Faction Lore, Mystical Weavers of the Raw, Magical Energies of Life and Death. The Dryan, Lifeborn Order, yeah, this has probably become my favorite faction, has dwelt in the Dark Forest of 
planet. Jeremy. Arboreus. Uh, Arboreus. Yeah, Arbor. Yeah. Okay, okay. Having to do with trees, uh huh. For countless ages, attuning their powers with the spirits of nature and the etheric beast that also call these ancient and forbidden places of the <clears throat> wild home. Masters of the arcane, these spell weaving magi learn to harness the very life force contained in the an anime? Anima? Anima. Anima. Of yeah. living creatures, even using the fallen and decreased to increase, or fallen and deceased to increase the strength of their spell casting or calling upon the powers of the earthly elements to create destructive manifestations of raw carnage, though few in number. That's a little bit of a hint. Though few in number, the Order's Magi make up for this only, or make up for this by enlisting. See, I'm throwing words in there. The Order's Magi make up for this by enlisting the aid of the world's many creatures and beasts, bolstering the ranks of their armies with the unbridled fury of their animal kin. That is so cool. The unleashing and end unleashing the very definition of feral rage upon their enemies. That's cool. And let me get the photo here. Let me just do this this wonderful these wonderful artist sketch sketches of the it's just like my gosh. Mm -hmm. I think this is like like uh like a, a type of um earthly wizardry that we didn't expect, but it's amazing. Just the I mean this is like all our it it Almost like an Alar Faction 2.0. I mean, 10.0. Let's just say Alar Faction 10.0. That just like a thousand times Alar. Yeah, it's it's very cool. <clears throat> Some of these, I, I don't even know. Just the level of detail in these sketches alone is. I mean, they have they're having three eyed owls. You could literally name a owl Hedwig and be happy. <laughs> So thoughts. I guess I'll go first. I mean, tree people are always kind of cool. Yeah. Mm. So nothing wrong with that. I, I, li I like some of the animals probably better than the people creatures, but we'll talk more about that later. Great. And I think one of the things that this faction might be kind of a small faction of of humanoid beings and it might be majority animal kind at least that's what i think it's saying in that description of, of this faction to where there's there's very few in numbers of of like the humanoid type mages but they make up for that in all their animal friends that come along and wreak carnage and it just Oh, it's so cool. I, I, and and insert enemy or insert any wonderful animal movie reference here. I, I, I there's there's a million that pop mad, so I'm not going to say any right now. But Homeward Bound, there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we have a sense of scale of these people? Because you know. Tree people can be really tiny, normal-sized people, or they can be really big. So, you know, they could be going with, like, a few large creatures, and then they have the little guys or the animals. Like, the models are physically large. Um, you see that sometimes in games where you have just really tall tree people. Like the Ents, for example, in Lord of the Rings. Those are huge. Right. Your, your guess is as good as mine. I, I Big or small, <clears throat> it's, it's going to be cool. And Ian and Kemp, the... uh, one, one thing, Joe, I just want to say, Ian Kemp says, I can't wait for these new units and to find out their skills to see how they will uh, complement the OGs like in Carmine uh, said they would. These uh, Dryans seem like they would only be able to be used with their own. Quite possibly. We'll, we'll see what type of uh, synergies they have, you know, with them, but yeah. yeah. 
Anyway, Jeremy, go ahead. My my assumption is so. Uh, this particular faction was actually teased like day one of Gen Con, because you know that's when we were we were checking out the new units and prototypes that have been posted or shown on at Gen Con, and uh, on that stream, uh, uh, and Carmine had mentioned the Dry and Life Born Order, but he re he mentioned it in reference to the dragon. So the dragon that is in the prototypes somehow connects to this group. Uh, we don't know yet how or in what way, but either that dry the dragon is a tree or like is some sort of like being that they come that comes from the forest of Arboreus. Nobody knows. But yeah, so the dry life born order dragon is part of this faction. And oh, I think right. yeah, the dragon. Yeah, so oh, that name God. Yeah, the name was dropped day one of Gen Con. Right. And now we know where it refers to where is it's for wizards. From. Wow. Can you imagine these magi just like I So they just summon a dragon, yeah. Dragons or, or and everybody just dragon. Leave. Okay, okay, you win. We go home. <laughs> and uh, we have I I want to say I want to say just just based on the th the thematic uh, elements from the from the the concept art that that leshy looking thing, the the tree with the the deer head and then the the wizard looking character. Those two are part of the Dry Life One Order. I want to say mm -hmm. that, but I can't confirm it. It's just like just based on what they look like and their sure. yeah. I, Those prototypes seem to connect with this order and speci or specifically. I just so. see a lot of I, like you see a t is that a two-headed wolf right here? That's like a two-headed yeah. wolf, right? Yeah. 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 Two yeah. Wolves. yeah. A couple two-headed wolves. Yeah, like a a, a a a wooden bear, like bear thing with four arms. Right. 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 Yeah. I like uh, the what the know. I would like to know what that skinny dry wooden alien creature uh on the right hand side there is that looks dope yeah i think that's the dragon i think that's a sketch you, for the dragon you think that's a sketch for the dragon the dragon only has one tail though yeah you don't no, think like it levels up do you because <laughs> because uh, because later on we they we talk about this this faction having you know, multiple versions of themselves, I think. Did you guys notice um, the, combinations. the the one that's above the Heroescape logo is like a fawn with a bow and arrow? Yeah. Did you catch that? Yeah, the, the centaur, yeah. Yeah. Centaur deer. Yeah. Uh, it's it's like, it's like okay, oh, I used to be hunted, now I hunt you. <laughs> 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 nice. You're not so going to get Bambi with this. <laughs> So I pulled up the picture of the Dryan Life Order Dragon, and now that you go back and look at him, he's definitely got a, elements of that wood grain kind of carved tree look to his armor and a little of his head. Mm -hmm. He definitely has the design elements of the guys we're seeing here in the concept art. Right. I'm good at that. Uh, yeah, that's what I, I was excited about. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see that. So the dragon has some sort of connection to this order. Either they summon him, or or they control him, or he 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 works for them. We don't have all the details yet, but this this particular group is connected to that dragon that we saw at Gen Con. So. Yo, that's yeah. wild. And I have one thing to say. Um, unfortunately, uh, Ben MK Plus Ultra was trying to join us, and he did have some technical difficulties. And unfortunately, he's not going to be able to join us, and he is. Yeah, he he messaged. He is bummed, but it's okay, Ben. It's okay. We love you. We totally understand. It's all right. We, it happens we, to the best yeah, of us, yeah, man. Yeah, it, it does. And now we we'll definitely um, get your opinions on things the next time that you're able to connect with us, which, which will hopefully be next Sunday. But totally understandable. We love you. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Anyway, but Ben, if you want, if you're if you're still listening. You could join us in the chat and just um, type in, in chat what you want to say on, on, on the live stream chat, either on Twitch or on Facebook. And if you want to join us there, if one of you guys want to send them that message, that would be cool. Just say, have him join us and then, then he can just type what he thinks on things and we will read them. That is no problem for us to do that. All right, anything else before I move on? Oh, go ahead. All right, all right. So, and does somebody want to read this the second day? Because as much as my wonderful, beautiful voice, you know, yeah, I'll read it. Loves it. <laughs> Joe, yeah, Joe, just, Joe, Joe doesn't even let me finish. He's like, yeah, just let me do it. Okay, all right. So let me let me bring that one up. This one is this one the spear animal spear animal one? 
Uh, it, no. It is not. No, which, which one is it? This is, um, there are footfalls in the distance. This is the big uh, the scion. scion of the wild. I... Yeah, this this guy's dope. <laughs> yeah, all this. Oh, got it, got it. Okay, okay. So, yes, we'll bring yeah. this one up. And, Joe, go ahead and speak the words. All right, speaking the words. All right, day 15. That sound of footfalls in the distance is heading right for us. The scion of the wild bows not before the belligerent city dwellers, instead lashing out with the primal anger of the many snarling beasts that fight beside him in combat. He has become one with the pack, understanding the instincts of nature's raw power better than any other dryad magi in the order. With a powerful magical staff forged by the mighty Volarak of ha Hakeland, the scion of the wild bends the beasts of Arboreus to his will and drives forth a raging stampede of claws, horns, and fangs to battle against his adversaries. Yes, yes, yes. You see a small picture down here too, but let me let me pull up the bigger photo of this of this feller. I'll say, I'll say this feller looks kind of he, he he looks mad, but it's hard to tell if he's mad with the mask. But I think it's the horns, you know. It, it's the horns. It's got to be the horns, you know. I mean, what's that? What's that ski on of the wheel? Do you see? He's just, just, uh. he's just amazing, you know. Anyway, so, and 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 Ian, Ian Kemp, uh, uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, he's 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 saying that uh, think think about how much the point value would be for that dragon. Um, LL Army of One, yeah. Uh, this faction would be perfect for someone that would bring, like, uh, Karak with a bunch of elementals to Scapecon. Yeah. And... Uh, I think that's a stab at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank Look, you, it, it was an effective army. <laughs> I, I, I use effective army, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know one thing that stood out to me, though, in this message? The reference to uh, Hawkland, right? It's, it's, called, it's pronounced Hawkland? Right, right yeah. Jimmy? Because that is the island out, if you if you're looking at the Valhalla map, that is the island out in the middle of nowhere that's referenced in the game, but we've never seen anything from it in the game. I, I don't think not not much, right? There wasn't much done aside, with it. Aside aside from the map, that was it. We have nothing from that area, so so just, just the name, just that and reference might indicate, yeah. and and I I, I I I figured that they probably would. That there are gonna, th these might be factions maybe from there, you know, that are that are coming. Like I said, they might expand. I mean, they could map. do anything with that area because yeah. it's never been used before. Right, so. right. So yeah, it, it 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 makes sense that you know since right. it's described in there that there's gonna be uh, things to do with that huge. I don't even call it island. It's or it's a small continent maybe. It's, yeah, subcontinent. Yeah. Like Australia. You know, mm -hmm. or something. Guys, he is holding two snakes or baby dragons in his arms. Mm -hmm. I just realized this. This entire week, I did not realize this until now. Yeah, no, he's got he's got animals on him. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're right. Wow. Well, the the <laughs> these guy. I mean, they they not just control na nature. They control they control the furry woodland creatures. You know, so. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes sense. I mean, th this one in the forefront, yes, has snakes. There's one that doesn't. Um, th there's one or two I, I see that doesn't look like uh, like along the side here, but the rest do. That does show serpents. That so that's got that's got to be some type of power for that. Mm. Oh. You think it's part of it, like a bonding type of thing? <sighs> Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it would be cool to be cut to kind of give that to to show that he bonds with certain type of characters through his sculpt. You don't really get that out of this, figures these days. This is a unique or even hero. the figures back then. 
I just, I just like the mask and the horns. It's just, it's just such. Yeah, the final design. I absolutely. The fact that he's hovering. Well, it's got hooves mm -hmm. too. This, this is another like yeah. uh, humanoid type creature that isn't human. It's, it's part animal. Looks like in itself as well. I mean, well, actually, some have hooves. There, there's one that looks like it has scales actually. So, but I think they went with the hooves. Yeah. Yeah. That the just... correct way to design this final miniature is to not put his feet in the ground, but have the cloak on the ground supporting him, so his feet are actually hovering. Yeah. Right. That's a GW trick. You see, Warhammer does a lot of cool stuff like that now, and it, it looks amazing when they do that, that crazy stuff. Mm. It makes the sense of a new fragile, and they the crack and fall apart, but they look cool when they hold them together. <laughs> it looks cool, man. That's all that matters. You just gotta be real careful with those figures. Mm hmm. But um, the arcane, all these guys, they're from a different planet. Uh, yeah. Uh, Arboreatus is a planet, as it says in the, in the previous one. So maybe they took over that island in Valhalla, but that's not where they necessarily are from, unless they're recruiting animals from that island or taking it over somehow or transforming it to be more like their world. I don't know. But there is a Valkyrie general in charge of this faction, right? So maybe that Valkyrie general is from that island. Maybe. And so is summoning those those guys there to him her whoever the that valkyrie general is assuming Maybe the new him. valkyrie general yeah for, for this faction that's what i would suppose because they didn't say there isn't a valkyrie general for this faction right did they say there is one no the, they, they haven't pointed there out isn't. yeah they didn't yeah. say there is or isn't as far as i know you can correct me if i'm wrong and anybody who's watching uh, correct me. No, if, I haven't. If I haven't seen any anything. About it. Oh, I see what you mean with the uh, with the map. Mm-hmm. Hockland, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Day sixteen. No mention of Valkyrie generals. Hey. Right. I mean, I was talk amongst least, yourselves. I, I, now, I think I think Ben's trying anyway. to reconnect. I'm just gonna see if I can get him. Back here a second. Yeah, let me make an adjustment. So we know here. we have Ben. Are you the mercenaries, on? the monster hunters. So mm -hmm. there's no reason to assume that maybe we don't have another unaligned faction. Who knows what they're doing? But mm. it's yeah, really possible. Yeah, I do like um, when they initially talk or bring out the new faction. And they show us all these little concept arts for the dry, uh, the Lifeborn Order, mm -hmm. or the, the DLO. Um, so <laughs> they actually have, um, at least so far. I mean, we've seen the owl in further concept arts, but one of the concept arts for the Scion of the Wild uh, is on that first page as well. Mm -hmm. um, it is interesting that they chose not what they, what I believe to be his final form. Um, or what the one they're, they cho they're, they chose, um, which is interesting. But I like that the concept arts are bleeding into each other. Um, as we go through them all, you'll see the similar images throughout all of them. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. They, and yeah, they all have, have similar, how would you say it? Uh... Similar artistry, similar ways of how they clothe themselves and, and dress themselves and present themselves in their, how would you put it, society. So it looks like they, they all like came come from, you know, probably a similar place. And that's just the wonderful thing about Hero Escape is that you can just make up whatever you want and you just say, that's another planet we're just pulling warriors from into. It doesn't matter what it is. Although, if I mean, we're getting, I mean, Ironclad... Yeah, it was a little bit um, m machinery, I guess, machinery and flesh, um, and and this is like more natural animal. But I would like something really, really industrial, like just all machine, just like just totally driven by AI, and that's it. Oh, like a like a hive mind, but but like. Complete, um, robots. AI. I mean, yeah. it, it could be more Solbergs. I mean, I don't mind. I want to mind more, more Solbergs. 
Yeah, but Soulborgs have each individual, I, I presume, correct me if I'm wrong, Lord Master, um, <laughs> but they have individual personalities. Yeah, they they have souls. Yeah, so that's that's the whole reason. Yeah, if there was like, like, like a machine, like a small machine, like AI that it was being controlling all of this thing, mm -hmm. um, that would be kind of cool. I'd like that. I mean, I do like my futuristic robot stuff. <laughs> I like this stuff too. Don't get me wrong. Oh, oh, yeah. But uh... more than likely, I'd probably be playing with this stuff more than the machines. It doesn't, yeah. mean, but it doesn't mean machines wouldn't be like a, a, a fun thing to do, like uh, off time, you know? Because yeah. they are. It, it's fun. It's like the last last game, like before Escapecon that I played in person was me against Jason, and it was basically Soulborg against Soulborg, and it resulted in him blowing himself up, and I basically won because, uh, well, his last his last miniature just. <laughs> blew up otherwise it could probably could have went ongoing and, and he would have won but it was it just came down to that and, and that, that that type of machine is just type of fun it's like either i kill everything or i blow up you know and mm. <laughs> oh it's fun anyway okay back to these now anything else to say about this about this unique this the scion let's That's get to the we, familiars let's get to <laughs> Let's get him. All right. Next. Is that is that spirit animal? Because I want to do the spirit animal. One. Yep. Okay. Spirit. That's animal. it. Let, let me do. Okay. I I, I want to do this one because I just I love the way this is written. Mm. So designers notes, day sixteen. You're only as good as the matter altering, teleporting, ravenous, lightning fast, intergalactic space puppy that you brought with you into battle now if there's a way i could take that line and convert it into something for tov you're darn right i'm going to that i mean that just oh that that that's the i laughed so hard when i first read that it just i guess it, it was a beautiful bit of writing there anyway one essential key to the dry and lifeborn order's tactical prowess is the magi's usage of etheric familiars to augment their already mystical powers. Each Dryan Magi carefully selects their animal companions based upon the parameters of the coming battle. Some etheric familiars can make it almost impossible to utilize range attacks against the Dryan from afar. Some can move effort effortlessly through the impending opponents, quickly flanking their enemies, and others still can project auras of immense magical protection to guard nearby allies from falling to the most grievous mortal blows. And when I finished reading that, I basically said, we're all getting our freaking spirit animal. It's just, it's, it, you're getting your own spirit animal now, you know? It's like, ah! <laughs> anyway, okay, so let me get to this, because this, um, these sketches for what we were given on that day it just it just shows shows a lot of furry woodland creatures and it just makes me happy. And the cool thing is that you see this wolf with horns, and so it's not the same two-headed wolf that you saw earlier during the week. This this is something a bit different. And yes, I want a teleporting wolf. Absolutely. A teleporting wolf. No doubt. Yes, 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 yes. It looks like we have like a fox. We got owls, we got the other winged things that look like owls but aren't owls because I, I... Somebody please tell me what these are. Now? Do these animals combine at all? That's a good question. Is that what they're trying to tell us? So, there's a there's a couple stuff on the Heroescapers forum if you had a chance to read it. Uh, Dadscape, so Dadscaper is the creator of the Dry and Life Board Order. Okay. And he was talking about how there's, you know, there's synergy in this group, but it's not as intensive as the pirates. Like, the pirates have a ton of synergy, like a, a very, very complex synergy web. But the the Drying Lifeborn Order has synergy, but it's not as complex as the pirates do. And so the the idea from what I've understand is that there's not a lot of these members of the, of the Lifeborn Order. 
there are there are a couple of wizards, but there's not like a ton of them. And so what they do to supplement their you know their limited limit in numbers is to combine their forces with these uh, these uh, etheric familiars. And depending on which one you choose, so what it sounds like is that when you draft your army, you pick a member of the Dry and Lifeborn order. And then based on what's going to be happening in combat, so like you're watching your opponent, your opponent's drafting a bunch of ranged units, there's an etheric familiar that's going to come out that makes you in, immune to range. Because it even mm. mentions, it says, makes it almost impossible to utilize range attacks against the dry and far. So it's like, that's basically saying if you watch, if you're if you're draft, counter drafting your opponent, right, you watch them and you see what they draft, and if they're drafting a bunch of ranged units, you draft the etheric familiar that resists against ranged units. Or mm. if you see them use a bunch of huge units, you might you might have one that attacks huge units or gets special against that. There's a they say that some can move effortlessly against impeding opponents. So we know what that is: phantom walk, stealth flying, that kind of stuff. So if you need if you need disengage, you you draft the etheric familiar that gives you disengage. Things like that. Gosh, I think yeah. these I think the familiars give powers to the wizards. And so that's they how still they want it. us to draft. Oh, okay, I see what they say. Yeah, All I think right. it's like mm -hmm. a counter draft technique. Like the yep. the, Dryan, the Dryan summon the etheric familiar com based on what kind of uh, level or whatever whatever type of combat's going on at the time. So you yeah, got very few of us still draft team. armies like that. <laughs> play the game like that, but they want us to still play like that. Okay, okay, Avalon. All right, that's fine. <laughs> Okay, crazy lady. <laughs> I mean, I mean the base game, the base advanced yeah. game is no. I know that's that's you know, how you're supposed to. That's how you're supposed to play. I get that. Play. Yeah, but, we yeah, just I think, don't. I think we yeah. <laughs> so it's too so. much time. We don't have time for that. <laughs> but, you're, you're, but that's no time you, for me. war. <laughs> but thank you. That was no. That was good because it makes sense. It does make perfect sense. You know, um, to have a lot of these different. You know familiars and these creatures to choose and pick from to be like okay so if i'm what kind of build what kind of build am i making um and you get to essentially get get grab whoever but i'm still wondering though because they are showing a three-eyed owl and then an, a three-eyed owl creature that looks like a dog and also an antler thing that teleports and i'm like are we com still combining these creatures at some point? Like, I and these I don't are, think so. These are but unique. It's, these are unique heroes too. They're not squads. I it's know. I know, but it's like, I don't know. It's like, what are the squads going to be like? You know, or, or are there going to be squads? See, I right. see. There's a theory a in the back of my head that I kind of want to do a separate video about of why we're not seeing commons, but. Uh, could, it be none? Could this particular faction be all heroes? I, part of it, part of me is telling myself because of of experience in Scapecon this past year that uh, literally every single army you fight against is stingers, stingers. Well, not even stingers, stingers, but it's just all common squads, all common squads, and like a few heroes trying to um, break the comp number trying numbers. to break the squad Here's a and they're going to show us a Each bunch of armies numbers. that are just all unique and and that's <laughs> it and it's just like i'm excited to see what they have to offer truly right. um, i think that's that i think that's what they're actually doing here um not that there won't be commons but it would be easier to sell everything unique um then again we don't know how they're selling stuff yet um but that would be a great way to sell things and also to go against the meta that is right now at ScapeCon and at some conventions and uh, tournaments. And uh, real quick, there's something I just found something Dadscaper said about the familiars. Said that uh, so he had the idea for the War Wizard and their backbone of the faction. Craig suggested that we also have familiars go with them. So so. Dadscaper created the wizards. These these are thick familiars were Craig's original idea, mm. and he you know then he, he agreed with it. And then so you're looking at some of them. It says as the designer notes text indicates, familiars will be with some limitations mix and match with the wizards. And then he says so this is a good example of how the work of the designer artist. So he's just talking about the way it looks. But yeah, so I think every time you draft the Dry and Lifeborn Order wizard, if you pick one wizard, you're going to pick familiars that match the current scenario at the time 
that you like, okay, so I need, I need protection against ranged, let me get this type of familiar. Or I need a protection against uh, you know, uh, adjacent attacks, let me use this type of familiar, things like that. So you would draft based on your necessities. That's what mm. it's saying for me. That makes sense. I like it. Yeah. Which, is, which that means that... Be... Oh, go ahead. I was like, well, it would be fun, because this is kind of a, a, something you can do with some games, is as a battle changes, you can call in a new familiar. So as long as your familiar is still alive, you swap them out. So maybe swap early out, on, yeah. you have protection against range attacks. Later on, you want to swap them over a melee focused thing. That right. would be fun. That. Like, oh! Yeah, that. <laughs> that po be Pokemon very, style switch there. That would be yeah. very unique <laughs> to a faction if that but were the case. That, that, return. That's, that's a thought. I choose you. That's yes. Thought. How do you actually draft that though? Well, I think unless they're point, all like the same point value. Yeah, Maybe. point limitation. I would imagine. And you need to get all of them too. Um, yeah. You know what that reminds you of? Take my money. You know. Uh, my money. The wretcheds. The wretcheds of Bogdan. You know how you can't you can't place the wretcheds unless you you some you you draft Iskra right and you draft mm -hmm. the wretcheds, but you can't place the wretcheds. You have to roll on Iskra. And she summons them to the field. So it might be a similar mechanic where you you know you draft the wizards, you draft the familiars, and then you have to roll the dice to get them on the field or something like that. You know, yeah, you know, something similar to that type of summoning attack. Which I mean, it's a possibility if they're if they're using some uh, back back backwards compatible rules and things like that, they might refer to older rules like that. Sure. Right. No. Yeah. No. It's it, very very good points and uh, yeah, it makes me look a lot for there's just it's just the, the more that they show the more i'm just like I, i'm i'm gonna be broke the rest of my life it just, it just, it just <laughs> no not I'm just, broke for the rest of your just, life just the next just for years. a year or so you know <laughs> you recover it's fine uh, see, this is this is where this is where we, we ask sponsorships from avalon hill Can you buy us yeah please? We'll play it on stream, you know. Yeah, we'll show them. off all the new I'll stuff. Anim I'll we'll animate them. them, you know. And yeah, just, then just I'll sponsor return, a few purchases I'll I'll here and there, and we'll, we'll we'll do the advertising. <laughs> you know. I won't play with them. I'll just animate them. <laughs> Maybe three D print them then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get digital renders of. Them. Maybe. Um, now it does. It does show on here that. There's small little numbers next to the one that's the teleporting fox and the bigger wolf. 32 and 33. Do you think by weird chance that that's the 32nd or 33rd ethn um familiar? Or or is yeah. that like the version of those sketches? It's right. probably just a reference number, so when reference the artists number. are talking about something, they say sketch number 32, and they know exactly what to talk about. Have a oh, okay, to yeah. Just trying to find it. Or they have a lot okay. of sketches, so... Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, very nice sketches, though. Whoever, I, I, You know, that's one thing I need to ask, Chris. If we, Do we know who, like, is... is the yeah, sketch who artist, is, sketch yeah, who is behind is, the is sketches? Is it one, or is there more than one sketch artist behind, you know, these... Because there's, because, a, there's a couple. I think it's Avalon Hill staff. Uh, very, very, very good the artists, you know. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, artists they have on there. I'm, I'm almost reminded of, like, Lord of the Rings when they, like, when they first started production uh, of that, of, of the original trilogy, of Lord of the Rings trilogy. They, all they were doing initially was just sketching stuff. Uh, just, and they had two, two Tolkien guys who were, like, very reclusive that they got to become part of their production team, and they just started sketching everything. And it just, the sketches themselves were gorgeously amazing. So that, that's one thing I akin to this. It's just lovely, lovely. And, okay, we, we see Ben. I, I, oh. don't, I don't know if we can hear Ben. Uh... I can hear Ben. All I can right, hear hold Ben. On. ben. Let, me, let me try and pull up I hear ben. audio here, because for some reason it's causing it to go low. I think I hear something. I think I hear something. Yep, I, I hear him. I hear yeah, him. I hear Ben. That's me. Yay! Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Better late than never. Like, literally, better, better. that whole time I was trying to work out my technical difficulties. And I did. It's okay. And I, I was kind of wondering whether it was uh, even a point to me showing up this late to the party or not. But oh no, no, it's I'm fine here. because because we're covering <laughs> it's never too late when we're 46 yeah. minutes in late. 
No, 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 because this is 46 minutes into probably a two to three hour live stream. So yeah, you, you're, you're good. You're absolutely good. Uh, no, it's, For great. Sure. It's, it's great. It's great to have you on board. So yeah, um, anybody who is listening to the podcast, um, yes, this is this is Ben now uh, above me. MK MK Plus Ultra. He he did now join us and he got his technical stuff worked out. So we will Finally. continue. And so Ben, I don't know if you were following along, but we were um, on day three of. So that would be Wednesday. Uh, this past week, I believe, of right. of of the of the little the familiars, wo- little woodland creatures, I like to call them. Yeah. You know, the, the cute mm-hmm. and cuddly uh, creatures that could kill you in I an mean, instant. Yeah, with teeth and horns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With teeth and horns. So cute. They can teleport <laughs> into your nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, t- tell us your thoughts before we move on. Um, for sure, like. The Dryan Lifeborn Order, that it's, I, I would have said this earlier if I had been on here earlier, because right. uh, I know you guys probably already covered this, but it's become one of my favorite factions so far. Uh, the pirates were cool mercenaries. I'm I'm not really that much of a pirate, cell sword, mercenary kind of guy, but that Arr. was cool to see all the other species. I'm, I like sci-fi. But I'm more fantasy. So this the the um iron iron ironclad, ironclad. collective. Yeah, ironclad. Yep. They they're fantasy. That was awesome to see all that. The Borg hive mind and stuff. But this fantasy stuff was really what intrigued me to HeroScape in the first place. I liked the Soul Borgs and everything, but my favorite faction of Classic Scape is the Orcs. That's pure fantasy. The Orcs don't have a lick of technology to their name, and they're still mm-hmm. one of the best top tier squads in the game you know not not that that has anything to do with you know the fantasy versus sci-fi but it's i I just love fantasy and so just to see that these guys are from this i feel like it's like the overgrown planet almost the opposite of where the the ironclad are from like there's you know technology and science and machinery and these guys are literally the opposite so they're the forest, they're magic, they're like, you know, I feel like they, it hasn't been said and I'm probably, you know, like putting words in somebody's mouth, but I feel like they're anti-technology, you know? Mm-hmm. Like if they see a machine trying to come chop down their forest, they're going to be pull the whole like, you know, avatar and try and go get them, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's that's so much more interesting to me than the, the, not that the science fiction stuff that they just brought, you know, to the HeroScape realm, like with Ironclad Club. Not that that isn't interesting, but this is just more interesting to me. Because also, now that we're on this, um, pretty much like the Beastmaster's Beasts, uh, that in and of itself is a lot more interesting to me. Like that's one of the more interesting parts of the the um, Lifeborn um, uh, order is this guy that can control animals. Like that's the reason why I like Pokemon. That's the reason why I like uh like beast masters or like even um in fantasy games if there's a guy that can go capture the wild beasts that you fight in the randomized battles or something like that like i want that character or just the just the idea of having an animal to fight for you you know that's the main thing in pokemon that's the main thing in all of these like a lot of these anime that we see too is like something to fight for you like you're controlling it bring back Zatchabelle and bring back like like mm-hmm. battle bots like the, all those things like you're you know controlling it and that is much more um stimulating to my brain than like you know a, a robot or like a, a a cyborg you know with combined with uh, inorganic and m- organic materials I just like these guys because the magic and just the aspect of like they live off the earth they live off their their land so that just was way more of a draw to me than um, and then the past two factions. And then, like I said, not that they're not great or not that they're looking awesome, but this was just like right up my alley. And so I really love these. And then also don't forget that the, um, the dragon that they uh, showed pictures of at Gen Con is part of the Dry and Lifeborn Order, according to that interview with uh, Craig Van Ness and uh the the pod father <laughs> uh yeah yeah i, I didn't realize that said. at first either <laughs> yeah yep. and that, so like that's, that's all, crazy. So awesome yeah if it's if it's, so if it's a dragon from that realm then maybe the beast master might be able to control it or it just has some 
given synergies with the with the order so that in and of itself is sick like maybe this guy that can control beasts can control the dragon it might you know limit it to like you know small or medium beasts or something like that but still it would be cool if we see some kind of synergy with the dragon and these lifeborn that we've seen and you know what the, the like the 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 fawns and and these these magi masters with the hooves so they're like kind of hum, humanoid animal type thing you know what it reminded me of uh like the creatures as described in in uh chronicles of narnia narnia mm -hmm. c.s lewis, C.S. Lewis. Yes, yes. Lewis. oh yeah. It, it, yeah it's it's kind of it's a little bit akin to that at least visually mm -hmm. it is and yeah i'm just like yeah that's that's kind of cool that they integrate that in there you know I, the, it, it's going to be fun to know, like, uh, hopefully in the future, you know, the planet that they're from, um, or the civilization that they're from, what type of civilization it is, and, and their motivations for fighting. Yeah, it'd be very, very interesting what, what they uh, take from that. So, now, next, next. This is, this is the first, I mean, this was, this was all cool stuff, like, starting out this week, and then Thursday come along, and this was an OMG moment. Because this might not be a big miniature, but I hope it's a big miniature. <laughs> and there, let me get this. Uh, this does someone want to read this? Uh, I'll give it to someone if they want to read this next. Uh, I can boost. go ahead and read it. All right, Jeremy, go ahead. So this is uh, day 17. Yep. It says, day 17, the sea does not like to be restrained. The oceans and rivers of Ahala were as deadly as any battlefield, and that was before the Dry and Lifeborn Order arrived on the planet. With Dry and Magi as diverse as the various life forms of their home planet of Arboreus, it is small wonder that one such as the Master of Tides would arrive to unleash the cataclysmic destruction of Ahala's oceans upon her enemies, capable of drawing upon the elemental powers of water from rivers deep beneath the earth. The Master of Tides' magic is capable of forming localized tsunamis and violent water spouts to wreak havoc. The Master of Tides can become near impossible to harm when using local water sources to mask her form from would-be attackers, making her all the more frustrating to opposing commanders. Oh, yeah, it's and pretty dope. <laughs> gee, and just I mean, just look, look at this. What, this is like Poseidon or, or like the king of the sea type it just it, what is this this is like oh. yeah. my gosh it, it's like I yeah I was I, I, I mean there were a lot of things that have amazed me but I think this is the the one of the first times that it actually literally blew my mind just to see that like like wow and and we're going to it's like it's kind of indicating that we might be going to more water type things type situations i don't know but to have this miniature that literally controls the water that could take the water elemental and be like <laughs> yeah you little thing you know and be like I, I control all of you wow this thing i'm just master of the tides yeah unique hero wow and i i hope that whatever because um, these are these are a lot of concept drawings, but I I hope that the final uh, miniature will be this one, the major one in center, because that just looks oh my gosh. Yeah, you've got three views of it, so I imagine it probably is at least a candidate for the final miniature. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm thinking it's just it's I mean it's just gorgeous. It, it's just mm -hmm. gorgeous. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping that this character can actually use water tiles nearby to attack people mm. as like a point oh, of like yeah point of uh, using the the water tile space to start the attack. So if you're within let's say two or three spaces of that water tile, you can use that water tile to attack like five away, <laughs> right? Or attack everything within that adjacent space of the water tile. Says Master of, si uh, of Master of Tides. I want to see a tidal wave special attack. I just yeah. say it right there, right here, right now. If there isn't a tidal wave special attack, I'm not gonna be happy. I mean, it says it says it has the magic of the Master of Tides is capable of creating localized tsunami. Yeah. So, so it's like yeah. tidal wave special in, attack. 
<laughs> what if he could bring people to the water tile, stopping, or at least he's trapping them in in the water? Oh, like a water vortex. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a lot of water. Related I think uh, she'll definitely have Slither, for mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Yeah. The most <laughs> main water weird. power. The main water power. Is but, the... obviously he's got to have at least three powers, so Slither's the one. Um, oh, cause like, and then... Do you think... Do you okay, think right. there's a, a elemental control aspect, like the actual water elemental, or is that just the wording they're using the elements of water? But, but like, yeah. I would like to see that. That would be cool. I don't know. I don't know. If... I'd make so, it a story arc. Yeah, because the water elemental is part a... of the D and D. Yeah, because yeah. it's part of the D and D. It probably won't be mentioned in the right. text yeah. of the new characters. But like, I'll make it a story this arc, one... though. <laughs> <laughs> this one specifically, I think it's going to be more based on the, the environment itself, and then and then remember, every giant wizard has familiars. We haven't seen what familiars the Master of Tides would be using. If no, if, you know, there if, might be shark people, like we saw as the monster slayers. Right. There's 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 the the water typed the water type yeah. familiars that this character would be controlling. I would like. Each, uh, I'm sorry. I just I, I, oh. sorry to interrupt you, Jeremy. I'll only do this once, because I was thinking, <laughs> if they have some type of undersea Atlantis type of um, land under the sea for creatures, wouldn't that be just? I, I don't know how they conceptualize it, but wouldn't that be cool to have like a continent uh, under the sea where they do battle? Oh yeah, just yeah. throwing it out there. That, that would be I, sick. I, I, I don't know how that would be imagined because within the game, but that would. Uh, be cool. I don't mean to like spoil what we're gonna talk about later, but what if for some reason there's a wellspring underwater, like a right. hidden wellspring in the you know underwater cave or something like that that gives life to a whole society that has because when have they ever talked about the waters of Valhalla? When have they ever talked about the oceans, you know? They like, just say it by name, that's it. Like, yeah. every once in a while. Mm -hmm. It's never been the, like, the, no bitter, the, bitter, the bitter sea, mm -hmm. and the, the glittering sea, and all the, yeah. like... But there's the bodies of water. What lives under the bodies of water in Valhalla? What do the fish look like? Mm -hmm. Like, that is a whole new area of Valhalla that's almost undiscovered. So. Under the sea, under the sea. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's a there's a post from Dadscaper who says uh, what we're looking here is that the second wizard, the Dryan wizards, all have some sphere of influence. So the yeah. Scion of the Wild is in charge of the beasts, and the Master of the Tides is in charge of water. So each wizard has a specific power, like structure that they that they control uniquely to themselves. And so every every other wizard, wizard that we get from the Order is going to be a specific power, and 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 their powers are going to be focused on that, which is interesting. Sick. Yeah, I just and did, did it say that this was part that this was of the same faction or is this a different faction? Yeah, it's the same faction. It's the same it's faction. A, it's okay. a dry, it's a dry magi. Okay, yeah. it's a dry magi. Okay, all right. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Any other thoughts before we move on to Friday? Um, no, I'm good. I Very think, good. I, I think we covered it. All right. Now Friday, of course, was the second OMG moment for a lot of people and <laughs> since since i know joe you called this so why oh, i call it yeah you call it why, <laughs> why, why, why don't you read what An and carmine wrote here for you last got Friday. it go ahead all right day 18 the old unit destroyed that day protecting her but found the greater purpose it so desperately wanted when the new unit came online, the smallest metal scrap of what remained of the old, all that could be found in this still smoking crater was forged into its new construction to honor its sacrifice and his love for her. Happy Friday, see everyone on Monday. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Thank <laughs> you so much for just tearing our hearts to pieces. Hey. Yeah, I'm miserable. I'm so sad about that. Because I, I mean, I he's reconstructed. And, and, and yeah, I hope. No reason to be sad. It's just you, you got to think about it. Like, okay, so so if I, if I may, go ahead, Lord, Lord Master. Bill. Yeah, you know this. Yeah, go. Major Q10 out said. of all the Soulborg, out of all the Soulborg that we were introduced to, Major Q10 was described specifically 
as trying to identify what it meant to be alive. And like like in the webisodes, he's talking about mercy. In his card, he's described as merciful. And the 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 script, the old webisode script, he's described as like when he was about to, like he was told to kill someone, he decided not to. And that's why he was summoned because he disobeyed a direct order from his superiors to save the life of another person. Like this, this one particular Soulborg above all the other Soulborg has been described as this, this powerful individual seeking meaning in life. And they're just going to be like, oh, he blew up. And I'm like, no, <laughs> he, did he find the answer? Did he find, did he realize he was alive the whole time? Please tell me, please tell me he found out before you killed him, please. Like, I'm so sad. Donnie like, Five is alive. I like, like, <laughs> please, like, I just, I just want to know that he, like, like, it's one of those moments, like those, like, slow mo moments in a movie where he turns, he turns to Shiori before he blows up, and he's just like, "You're safe now," and then, or something. I just want to know <laughs> that he figured oh, it out. Oh, were you referring to Shuri for that? Well, it says protecting yeah, her, sure. so yeah, I'm. Yeah, yeah I thought it was sure. Raylan. Well, because yeah, like sure. he in the in the bios or in the in the, especially in the journals, he was taking yeah. care of Shiori the whole time. Uh, like he, he went to go okay. save her when she got captured by the Morrow. Uh, when they were crossing Volcarian Wasteland, he fed he 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 hand fed her water because she yeah. was she was dying from the the ash and the smoke, and he hand fed her water to keep her safe and alive. So like he was protecting her like it, like a child, like he's like you know making sure she was safe the fields. and like. So I'm assuming when he said when they say her that he he somehow jumped in front of a bomb and then blew up and then I'm, I'm just like I'm under the <laughs> impression that this was after the swarm of the morrow. Yeah, like he it would died definitely be after during. Yeah. Really, I thought he died during the swarm of the morrow, like when he, he got all he messed up fighting Torkoal Na. He lost his arm. He's, his arm was. He said his arm was hanging from a, a few like cords because it got ripped off by Torkoal Na. But like he never, he wasn't dead. He's so this is a later dead. event, a future a event than Swarm of the Morrow that that made him get blown up and have to be reconstructed. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I just I thought he died at the end of Swarm of Morrow, so this was 2.0. Right. Like no, he, he major he Q stabbed. 11. He got stabbed mm. and his arm got ripped, but it was that was huh. that was all they said that mentioned. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's very possible that he could have gotten an upgrade. He might not be. Right. He's probably not called Major Q10. Like, it could be Major Q11 or something. Um, right. Or a 10.5 would be funny, too. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Just to be like, it's the same soul, but it's a different body, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, dude, this design's so badass. He's got, I love this. Uh, the, hammer, the hammer looks he's, really cool. He's got a hammer and three... Uh, Three WMDs, really, you know. Yeah, no more machine pistol. Yeah. No pistols for him, man. He's got rockets yeah, all day. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's just machine wow. gun special fire. Machine gun special tech. It, it, it's it's a beautiful beautiful design. It's just mm -hmm. so lovely. Yeah, it, it's like a reborn. So now, if if now, I'm interested to know on the story, the lore wise of. Uh, the revision of this of this major if if is still the same type of being or is he different is he now a mindless you know machine or does he still have some of the the heart you know left in him right. i'm sure he has a, has all the character i don't i don't think because of how heavy of lore they're stretching through um i don't think they're gonna be like yeah he's soulless now you know i bet that's silly like I'm sure he's the same character, but he's angry. He wants to get back at it's it's like, it's like Gandalf, you know, the gray from Gandalf to white. Yeah, not, not the same, but still the same. Maybe, yeah, maybe in that sense, only only in a mechanized Soulborg type of way, you know, instead yeah. of a wizard type of way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because do you think in the lore you could transfer? A soul from a soulborg soul board to another. So like, even if 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 a soulborg from Jandar was dying, and then there was a a death reaver that was out of commission, and they just transferred it into there. Like, if that's possible, then this wouldn't seem too like far fetched for the lore to for them to just reforge Q10 and to right. put his soul in there. But what actually makes the soul? You know, like what? That's the that's the like, question. How and. 
How do you transfer that? Interesting. What was transferred? Interesting TOV comment too. At the end of season three, we see a hint of something like that, and Jeremy knows this a little bit. Um, within uh, Vidar and his faction near near the end of, of season three of Tales of a Hell, we, we kind of actually do that type of uh, mm. type of thing, which will be revealed later. But yes, I found that interesting. But yeah, it's I, it's very much uh, interesting how even even the original stuff you know revised is uh, lots still lots of exp exploration mm -hmm. to do with these and. Yeah, so any, any other comments with with, uh, so, with the major? I think one thing of note, Yes. Um, on his chest, he clearly has a Vidar logo. Right. right. Yeah. I don't believe the original major Q10 hat. Um, um, and was it, didn't, as I was looking at, look at pictures of the miniature, and I don't think it had the, the Vidar logo on it, but I don't know, it may have just been an oversight, they didn't put it on the miniature for whatever reason, but wasn't Vidar building a Solberg factory? under his castle or something like that he has one yeah he had the the secret underground facility yeah i think he had a whole civilization so, didn't he mm -hmm. it was it was could like this be one of yeah so but, could um, this be like the vidar soul bar that he built so it's like a, it's a new chassis constructed print in valhalla and therefore it also would imply that his, vidar his is still version. around still in some sort of command structure or at least someone's using their his insignia still right still got to be around it, that's true I know that because they've been saying that's the they've been checked they've noticed that each of the symbols have somehow show up in each of the Friday so like you know the the Onmitsu oh, yeah. has was referring to Einar and then the first week was Sonlin or the Sonlin mm -hmm. uh, character Over. has the other flag so it's like each each weekend is uh, referring to the previous generals oh. and. I think they're they're wait everyone's waiting to see if they're gonna mention all of them. Like each week is gonna be like a reference to each of them or something like that. It's gonna be sick. Yo! Oh my god! Just every they Friday it, that though. goes, I look forward to the next Friday. Right. Well, I mean, there's <laughs> revealed next. You know. There's Torkul Na, who's who's Utgar, and then there's also now. make your predictions. Raylan and. Raylan for Jando, yeah. Raylan and Drake. Drake. Yeah. And that could be yeah, the gender one. I don't one. know. <laughs> it could be the gender one. But but the question is, will they continue doing the same units from because like it's it's I mean, Torkolna is a Maro character. I don't think they'll do a two point oh of that character. I think it'd be kind of weird. The Maro the Maro was definitely trying to do their own thing in the swamps too, because they were they created those hives and they were like they even have their own flag. If you if you saw the box art they show like banners with the Maro face on it. So I think they were actually trying to go break off and do their own thing. Like for a if, while now. If it is released on Friday that that the Avalon Hill and the new team uh, for Hero Escape is gonna have even if even if the entire week is all Maro, <laughs> okay. Um I'm gonna freak the hell out. <laughs> I was gonna freak out. <laughs> um, please record that. So there is no, there's room for it because Torkel Na died in Swarm of the Morrow, like the the right. monster he was riding, and apparently he was crushed. But who's was, to say uh, he was yeah. completely crushed? Maybe just the bottom half of his body, and they fused him to a they fused him to a yeah. giant monster. Because no, there could, there's room point. for a Torkel Na 2.0 because the monstrosity oh, died, God. so they could just have him riding a, a bigger, better monster. Yeah, they say Mario I mean, don't I die. Want they just a big get So hmm. it's all about you know <laughs> keeping the DNA intact. So I mean, they could easily respawn a, a second Torkoal nut through the hive or something like that. Just like you know, recover his DNA and then re you know fix what was wrong with him and like yeah. you know improve on whatever caused that failure. Because they keep they keep rebirthing them over and over again mm -hmm. based on I'm, the response. I'm gonna try. To I'm gonna try and make their, a prediction. The outside. Um, and I, I probably am gonna be wrong, but. Uh, what if what if next Friday it 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 is like a Raylan and Drake merging or something like like mm. a child or a child of Drake? It doesn't have to be specifically from Raylan, but but a, a second gender instead of like a, a 3.0 of those two, maybe a next generation um, thing. Uh, e either either sense. one. Uh, right. I, so 
that that's a prediction. I don't know if it's going to be true, but we'll see. And if if it is true, then I'll say next Sunday. I called it. Yeah. No, I I li actually really like that prediction. I like that one. There, there is two from Jandar in Swarm of the Morrow, which is the Raylan and Drake 2.0. So why not turn them into a, like a legacy character? Exactly. To where like, you know, their backstory and it's such a, a nod to the classic scape. And it's right. still like you were talking about the other podcast, something new for these new players to have. Like they have their, their, you know, Raylan Drake baby, like that's theirs. But then we, it's, you know, it's still a nod to us. As class. He's a young wanna, Marine wanna, character with Val. Valkyrie rings. I, I wouldn't yeah. mind an old man Drake. That would be a really cool thing too. Um, yeah. Or or some, somehow a a Raylan um, turned. I I don't know how more uh, awesome she could get, but you know, I mean, that becomes the cool Ark Kyrie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so Raylan. Raylan the wanted... Ark Kyrie warrior. Oh, that's an idea. <laughs> Raylan got a hold of one of the wellsprings. We yeah, because she's been what is it, Jandar's friend since since childhood. So he's just like, hey, so take a take a little drink. There's a fun little side tidbit, actually. Uh, so once again, part of the the that webisode script that I still I still got to figure out how 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 legit that is. But that in the webisode script, they mentioned that uh, Jandar saved her, like he 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 rescued mm. her from uh, her her home her hometown had been completely razed to the ground. And he recovered her. She was hiding in the ruins, and he found her hiding. She was like a child, and he trained, he raised her, and trained her up to become a warrior. Yeah. And that's why she helps him because he's basically her adopted father. Yeah. So, but yeah, if, he, if she if she ends up taking over his forces or something to that effect, like he, you know, she becomes the next the the, the leader of of the mm -hmm. the Andarian forces or something like that. That would be really cool. Jason, you you were gonna say something. Yeah, with Hemo C and her mind amul amulet, did Rayleigh mm -hmm. get one of those? Uh, what Drake if... Drake destroyed it. She she oh, did okay, get I'm possessed, like... and then Drake destroyed it. I think uh, some no, people no. were commenting on if if Raylan turns evil, you know, type thing. She already did. She ar yeah, she, she already did. Yeah, she technically, already, so she could again. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, the possibility, yeah. like re residual mind. Because the thing is, like, when someone's in your brain, I mean, that's gonna sit there for like ever. Right, and she even says in the comics that that witch was in my head. So it's like, mm. if Kimoshi would wanted to, she could, you know, reinvoke those magics and somehow, with a greater potency, could probably take Raylan over again and be like, I was already here, so I'm just gonna come back. You know, you know, yeah. something to that effect. Mind magic is always, you know, up to the writer. <laughs> you know, you can do really anything sure. with it. So, but oh. anyway, all good things. All mm -hmm. good things this past week. I, 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 I mean, obviously haven't haven't been disappointed in in any of these uh, a, a, any of these presentations of of these miniatures and and what their ideas are and such. And this week, definitely, definitely no ex exception. And excuse me while I'm trying to like shut off all these windows worth of. <laughs> <laughs> of uh drawings i have here and yeah so yeah the major is is definitely back and just looking more awesome than ever it's it's a very cool thing yep. so that that's the week that, that's that's what we have to present to everybody for uh this past week look forward to what's going to be happening this week always with a just a wonderful joyous open it's, it's almost like christmas like every week mm -hmm. really and it's still and it's still hard to believe it's 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 been like only three weeks right three and a half weeks since or three yeah weeks, three and a half August weeks since, yeah. since uh this this announcement happened it's um it feels like a lot longer but it hasn't um, mm -hmm. now we're just now we're just waiting like okay when are they gonna announce a master set or something and then like, <laughs> or how far along are they that's that's, that's the question is like, i don't when? when i think they have a prototype and concept art they're just working on trying to get that stuff while and they're giving us the yeah. teasers while we wait yeah yeah i don't know how much concept art they have i don't know how many weeks of concept art i don't know how far they can go with this mm -hmm. but i think they pretty much have a prototype and i think i have i think they have all the like rules and stuff that all that fleshed out i'm just i think they're trying to figure out how are they putting this all together you right. know and and how many can they make and what they can do with it and 
So I, I definitely don't think we'll see this, you know, as soon as we think we'll see it. Um, well, I'm just hoping there's a way to pay money sometime because the, the, the take my money <laughs> feeling that a lot of people probably had initially, I mean, yeah. over time, the excitement, I mean, will wear down a little bit. It just, it, that's just marketing, you know? It, it, yeah. It, you get you get your you get your base excited, you know, over something, and they're just like, take my money, and then you're just like, no, no, we're going to give you this, we're going to give you, okay, that's wonderful, but take my money. No, we're going to give you some of it. Take my money. No, we're just going to show you some more of it. Take my money. And, you know, and so, I mean, I, I hope we get something soon to where there, there's just some type of, okay, um, put in this for whenever we have the master set set up so they have that initial like money investment thing and if it will if it is a kickstarter type of thing i know is there been comments to where that's not what it's gonna be because i've heard i've heard both sides of that when it comes to uh well they never said they never confirmed anything about a master set yeah. is that what you're trying to say yeah he, they, he's he's made it clear that he wants us to not think of it as a master set like right. the way we think it is because which stinks because i really like that idea but i understand why they can move on and it's do a, something different really, just well, so it's also it makes sure that you get all the terrain tiles that you want to get i mean terrain tiles sold separately if that's what they're planning is a beautiful thing yes that's actually very nice yes if, if, that, if that's what they're thinking to where, okay, it's not all up in one set. There might be like just sets of the miniatures that you're going to get. And then, then, you know, you can choose whatever terrains you want or, or something. That'd be cool. And then we're just speculating this because we don't know anything. Yeah, but, especially with the rollout of how we're seeing the concept art. Because I'm still waiting for like the one week that we just get concept art of the world. And we just see like the land and terrain tiles and like the different new terrain we'll see and the new ruins and new whatever, like, you know, everything yeah, we we're talking about last week. Yeah, like, where's that week? Yeah. Can we get that week of the like, concept yeah. art of like how we're doing the new ruins I and how we're here? That. No, I that would know. be insane. Mm -hmm. Like, here's a new tree. Here's a mushroom. Here's a building. <laughs> here's, here's a, a you know, Stop um, cooking. <laughs> Right, you know, like, it's just weird, like, I want to, like, the figures and characters are so cool, the factions, the story, awesome, show me the world! Mm. I want to see, like, because I, I love building with maps, and, you know, I don't really, I don't think you guys really see with my content yet, because I don't really talk about Virtual Escape a lot, but, like, I play with it very often, and, um, and I love building extravagant, you know, worlds, and, make different castles and different areas and swamps and tundras and all that stuff so what's next right like what's the cool land thing that we're doing next um so uh there's a huge valhalla is huge and, and and learning into the lore you know going from not knowing the lore to now knowing the lore um really has showcased and told me is that this place is huge and it's only getting bigger and so, where else can we go? What other these different biomes look like? Um, you know, of course, I would love to see more swamp or more tundras and more dungeons and all that stuff. But what's new? What's next? Um, I'd love to see if, if they could bring in like like a spaceship orbiting the planet of Valhalla. And then, and then I am having, so glad you brought that up because and, and creatures, you know, like 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 little little green men, you know, just or just that have is my prediction. I wanted to say that, but fine. It'll I want a I actually, prediction thing. I yeah, I really want to see like as a faction, like actual like aliens and spaceships kind of stuff. And they have like ability where they can just drop units in from their ships. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be so like, wild. Even having like spaceship mm. type terrains, you know. Imagine if they had an ability, mm -hmm. kind of like if you guys are familiar with Gears, with the Hammer of Dawn. Mm -hmm. Are you guys familiar? Yes. I've mm -hmm. heard it. Yeah, I've I've heard. I've seen people play. For those that aren't familiar, in in Gears of War, it's a Xbox 360, Xbox One video game. Um, so there's the, the locust. Mm. Uh, yeah, well, there's Locust, but the Hammer of Dawn is essentially a laser-guided um, satellite, satellite, satellite. missile or mm, satellite just, laser from yeah, the like sky. It's a huge sky beam. Yeah. 
Mm. So all you have to do is essentially point the laser at what you want to shoot, and the satellite shoots down a giant laser and explodes the world. And if you don't, <laughs> and do it kills right anything away, in its path, you can you just kind of just drag it around. If you don't do it right away, too, the thing that's chasing you will kill you by just touching you. So you mm. right too. To <laughs> yeah, it's a, um, it's it's a very adult game, but it's a fun game. <laughs> it's a really fun one, but so having you know these little green men running around and have these abilities, these special powers from their alien ships would be very different for Scape to think about Scape wise, where you would right. need to, you don't need, you know, you, you could do it from range, but like to have their abilities and powers be commanded from the sky and not themselves. <laughs> <laughs> like none of their, all their ranged attacks are just, you know, from their ships and not them. It does it, they they have the laser targets or whatever, um, but uh, they don't actually shoot things. They just point and click, and everything comes from the sky. But that'd be so cool. Yeah, something something like that would be nice. And yeah, okay. And before okay, anybody has any predictions? And then we're gonna move on to uh, comments from last from from a video from last uh, TOB lives uh, last Sunday. Well, I can I can add something about the possible product launches with the HasLab system that Hasbro uses on their website. Okay. It's, it's generally done two different ways. If it's a one product, like a new Star Wars toy or something, they put it up to where it's like, we, we want to pre-order 10,000 of these, and if we get 10,000 pre-orders, we'll make the figure. Um, and you'll see some of the figures were successful, some were not, whatever. Uh, with Hero Quest, where you had the base game, and then at least two or three expansions, it was a set money they had to raise so they set like there's a million dollar minimum total order between all those available products so i'd imagine with hero escape if you're not gonna have a quote master set maybe a terrain pack and then like four independent like you know you have a dry and life order box set and then your um monster hunters box set they would probably go with the total money order amount where each one of those box set has a price and then the terrain set has a price and mm. you order what you want again two or three of everything yeah <laughs> yeah I've, I've i've now learned i've now learned you don't especially with commons don't don't just buy one <laughs> yeah but we haven't seen any commons though yeah i i so... definitely think i mean because if you think about it every every single master set aside from swarm of the morrow right swarm of the morrow has a specific style to it but like like rise of the valkyrie did not have commons and oh. the the uh uh was the battle for the underdark had i think only the uh was it the drought Real. Um, and, yeah but like that's it you know like specifically master sets are usually designed to be played by themselves and so they're probably following some sort of familiar familiar format because once again it has been told to us in the discord that it's not a master set like we think it is like you know that term specifically refers to a specific concept to us and he said it's not going to be that so that's all we got we don't know what how it's going to be released or how you know that style but it's not going to be like Rise of Valkyrie, but I think they're trying to follow a similar style, you know. We know what they mean by master set. Like, what is that a definition to that? Other than what does it mean? Yeah, I, I'm assuming like with dice and order markers and and rule books and and terrain pieces. It might some of that might be missing in this new set, or some of it might be like they they might be just releasing the units by themselves. We don't know. I, I just assume that. This is, yeah, oh this yeah, is true. You do need a. We don't. Know. We don't know. <gasps> Unless yeah. each okay, imagine this. Imagine let's say the Dryon Life Life Born Order. Um they have a box, all their unique heroes in it. In that box comes a, a, a let's say two sets of unique um order markers for that faction. And then um and then a set of dice. Um probably like, you know, let's say I don't know, let's say is 20 dice for a 20 attack 20 to attack 20 defense does that sound like too much Probably. 12. i think Maybe? it's just it's going to be the dice with both the shields and the skulls on them. oh you think it's going to be like, like the, okay yeah yeah that makes sense that that would be cutting a lot of costs too which then, i was not a, not a huge fan of those dice but i'm thinking um, too it's like they're just trying to prove that Heroescape can come back right now, so they might only release uniques right now because they're not anticipating people trying to buy a lot of you know these sets because just like what happened with the 
the classic scape is all those unique packs just sat on the shelves and people mm-hmm. just kept buying right, up and up the commons. Yeah. So they might be waiting until it's proved itself again and people want HeroScape and then they'll release the Maladin's Prophecy, you know, version two. Not that saying, but they're going to release the first wave with the common figures in it. I think that could happen just like we got the Rise of the Valkyrie and then after that, all those unique heroes, and they proved that it's really good because it didn't come out simultaneously, did it? Like, but not that like they were waiting either, because I'm pretty sure they had all the common squads built up anyway before at, before they released the Rise of the Valkyrie. But still, I feel like that's what's happening is we're getting all these uniques, and we haven't seen a common yet because they're gonna hold off on those for right now, maybe. Yeah, or they just no, haven't I believe that. Possibly. Here's what I think. Here's I think Joe, you're on to something. Um, because traditionally tabletop game, tabletop miniatures games are released in starter sets in one of two ways. You have a two-player starter set, or you have a one-player starter set. The master sets before were basically two-player starter sets. But they could go now with each faction having a one-player starter set. So you need two of them to, um, you know, be able to play the game technically correctly. And mm. on top of that, everything in there would be unique. Because one of the things that most tabletop games do is their starter set is a better value than individual miniatures because they want to get people in at a lower price point and make their money longer term with the other miniatures. Where some game companies screw up is that the starter set has such a good value, people only buy the starter set and they never sell the other stuff because there's, it's so much of money savings for the starter set. So if everything in the starter sets are uniques, you know, each player is only going to buy one of those per faction and then they're going to go ahead and buy the extra stuff later on and at effectively a higher profit for Apple on Hill. Mm. Mm. Yeah, again, two or three of everything. <laughs> anyway, okay, let us move on to uh, the, like I said, the comments. And uh, hello, Marion, I just wanted to, I know you gave a shout out there in the comments. And I, I see you, I, I say hi, everybody says hi. Let's, let's go, okay, so there's some things we talked about last Sunday. And when I posted this on YouTube, uh, some people commented, so we're going to cover some of those comments right now. And let me open this up. Uh, G Busy says, I love listening to these. We need a TOV podcast. Just kind of confirming what we already pretty much figured that uh, this is becoming a thing. And literally came out of nowhere. Which which is fine. It's fine. We're getting that set up, so G, G Busy, yes, we're... we're, we're going to create audio versions of even like I, I have saved audio versions of, of all the live streams that I've recorded so it's easy to render them into an audio format and, and post everything starting with Age of Annihilation uh, announcement online eventually so eventually this will be set up and this will be good out it just depends on when and hopefully I would say as soon as possible so it it's coming it's coming just hold on to your cats or whatever you hold on to now let's move on here. Okay, we got uh, Stephen Taylor. As he says, while I know the story past has centered around the securing of the wellsprings, I would wonder if some parties, especially uh, out aid of generals, may have decided that the whole thing is more trouble than it is worth and just decided to burn it all down. <laughs> Hence the <laughs> age of annihilation moniker. And I think this, this went into, I think we were discussing about... Uh, possibilities of what age of annihilation uh means um and i think i think it referred to as being like what if like not just Valhalla, but the whole universe has been annihilated or something but uh yes uh steven i mean i i think there when it comes to the like i think there's going to be a little bit more doubt and I, you've already seen it a little bit in the way they've presented some of these factions to where there's not going to be much support probably for the generals this time around. Um, there, there's going to be questions being asked, which should because, um, and even things, some things that uh, Chris and Carmine has referred to, the, the possibility that, okay, what are the effects of taking these wellsprings? Um, you know, who is, who is actually in control of these? How, you know, why did mm-hmm. these appear? Who, 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 who made these come forth? Um, who is in control of these things? What what is the consequences for for having trying to maintain control of these things? What are the consequences, good or evil, 
for waging this war. And yeah, so I think we're going to see a bit of that. Any thoughts from you guys? Um, yeah, I mean, we don't know, you know, obviously what's going to happen. We're still speculating. So Age of Annihilation isn't the name. It's, it's the name of the story arc that 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 they're doing. Um, at least that's been confirmed. So it's um, it's interesting. It's 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 like I think we were saying a couple weeks ago. It, it's what happens to the power of Valhalla with these wellsprings um, when uh, when it's corrupted. You know. Um, what happens to the world um, when the magic is being dysfunctional? <laughs> um, or being doubted, you know? Yeah, it's like, that too. Like a lot of these guys thinking, why are we here? You know? Yep. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, they've already yeah. kind of touched on that with the pirates and people defecting from their factions and like right. maybe something is going on or maybe something happened to where the the Valkyrie were supposed to prove themselves and they didn't come through and that really like let everybody down or like they've just sustained massive casualties over you know the war and like people see Utgar winning or they see like it's it's a pointless battle so that's you know and that that is what he was talking about or what we were talking about the how it it's like the end of all the worlds like that was part of Jandar's vision was seeing Udgar collect all 15 amulets and then going back to Earth to invade Earth. And so maybe, possibly, he did secure more than one amulet or did secure a lot of amulets to where he's now spreading his influence throughout the, the universe, throughout the multiverse. I don't know if it's, you know, because the battle for all time, so he's going to different time periods. So I don't even right. know if we're talking about a single universe. It, he's probably pulling from, but like he's trying to control the multiverse. And that could be referring to the Age of Annihilation also as somebody's gathered enough power to influence outside and not just bring people back. And that's another thing we're talking about. Who did put these wellsprings there? because like when they're described they're talked about with like runes inscribed in them and markings and stuff so there was an ancient civilization that had these in place and so out way back when i was under the impression that they were they were natural wellsprings of power and they just popped up on valhalla but i feel like now after some of the discussion we've had is like they were put there and maybe this is the creators or the people that are above the generals because when you think about it too like there's generals are not the highest in the in the country you know what i'm saying they have an emperor so these are valkyrie generals so there was some, there is somebody higher than them in power and maybe that's what this agent annihilation is referring to is somebody coming back or them even having to band together against the power of the wellsprings who like that's a good question who put them there how long have they been there what was their original purpose and I think that's a big question of just what's going on right now. Right. Yep. Any other thoughts? Let me move on. Thank you, Stephen, for the comment. And let's, okay, let's go to this one. Twice uh, commenting here. Chad! Chad is back. The Chad. And, and the Chad? And, and just, and just, um, <laughs> just for past reference. Um, when I started saying all these Chadisms, um, I didn't realize there was a meme. And I was educated after after the live stream that there is a meme. And I saw the meme and I'm just like, oh, yeah, there there is a meme. So I don't refer to Chad or Chadrific or the way of the Chad as being associated with said popular meme. Because I have no clue. I'm an old guy and my... <laughs> my my view on pop culture goes way back uh, further than uh, whatever this meme at uh, first appeared. But anyway, it's <laughs> it's beneficial to know that, and so I just in our own realm of the TOV podcast here, the Chad is a very endearing thing to say. So let me go back to this. All right. Okay, find him. Okay, so the Chad says. Yeah, I also doubt Annihilation refers to 
the rest of the universe being destroyed. Kinda cause why wouldn't a magic or weapon with uh, that banana's level power and magnitude spare Valhalla? It is a cool thought, but sorta of goes against the whole linchpin and theme of here escape pulling warriors from all over the galaxy. But it's from across all time too, so we already kind of discussed that last week that you could still be pulling warriors um, in a time period before the universe gets annihilated. It could have been annihilated in a different time. So, I mean, but yes, I and I, I, I began it with the premise that this is probably not the case, but it would be cool that if it was. Anyway, he continues, I think it is just a cool sounding buzzword, uh, same as if they uh, named it uh, Hero Escape Armageddon or Ragnarok or anything else metal like that. Uh, probably just referring to the war and destruction taking its toll on the world and the general's uh, political system getting restructured also. And that is most likely the case. Uh, I, 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 th I think that is most likely the case. I just, I, 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 but I still love the idea that um, the, the, having an underlining story arc that in order to stay, save the universe from itself, but it's already been destroyed, and that provide gives gives you more of, of like a time traveling enduring thing happening too. I think that would just be kind of a cool story arc to have. To like we're saving the universe after it's already been destroyed, but we have to fight for um, something, you know, s s s some yeah. doohickey thing to to revert back time yeah. and to to where it was normally put, you know. We well, need a MacGuffin. Yeah, MacGuffin. There you go. That, that's the word I was actually looking for. MacGuffin. Yeah. I should know that. What was my filmmaker mind thinking? I don't know. <laughs> but yes, yeah, exactly. Get, get that MacGuffin and, and have it, uh, you know, settled to rights. And then he also says, a character having the ability to change around your opponent's order markers would be Banana's in interesting ability. I don't. What character is he referring to with that? I know, uh, I know he's right. last week, but he's talking about the Ironclad. Right. Um, yeah, being able to do that. Yeah. But like, there's characters that already kind of do that um, in in not official scape, but in the customs community. I know uh, my buddy Eric found a Joker character, like like Batman's villain, the Joker, that actually can mess with your order markers. Um, and and uh, I don't think we got to test it out yet, but I know he sh he was showing me cards. I'm like, yo, that's pretty cool <laughs> to switch your order markers around. Um, and I know there is another custom um, on the other end. Uh, Rygarn, I think his name is. He can manip he can manipulate your own order markers. So if by chance you made a mistake during your setup, you could essentially swap your one for your two, or your two for your three, your three for your one, and do stuff like that. So. Uh, any other any other thoughts from from Chad before I let him go? We can really never let Chad go. We can't. No, we can't let him go. No, keep on, keep on commenting, Chad. We love, we love, we love the back and forth. Uh, but th yeah, thank you, Chad, for the comments. And moving on because we got, we got a few comments here. Some, some people are really liking this stuff. Okay, Justin, and okay, I'm gonna try and pronounce the last name. I apologize if I butcher your last name, Justin. Whoa. But Justin Afarisian. There, I tried. Uh, but Justin, thank you for commenting. He says, for people not saying these new figures uh, don't look like Heroescape, it's supposed to be the battle of all time. We have Spider-Man, Robot Samurai, Elves, Dragons, Knights, etc. Why not bring in Space Pirates and a Borg-like race? Justin, why not indeed? Why not indeed? We, I think all of us are in agreement here that it's Heroescape. You can yeah. do absolutely anything and be absolutely anybody, practically. That's, that's the beauty of it. So absolutely. All right. Easy. Moving on to the last comment. Uh, <laughs> D Demon Hunter Pillar, who's commented it before, uh, has a couple of thoughts. Because a couple says so a couple of thoughts for me. My impression with Shiori's different poses, as it could be concept art for different moves we'll see in any animated videos, which is very true. Uh, we know a voice actor was hired, but not for Shiori. It, it, it was it was a male voice actor, but there doesn't mean other voice actors couldn't be hired. So likely some kind of promotional video is going to be made. Mm -hmm. Isamu witnessed Agent Carr being summoned. Uh, this is this is the number two comment. Uh, Isamu wit witnessed Agent Carr being summoned as he was about to kill him. What if Isamu could have discovered Utgar and reached out to him somehow in order to be summoned to continue his on his hunt for Agent Carr? And that, that's kind of a side story. And I think Jeremy, you probably know the lore 
in that more than anybody, if you know. Oh, the Samu. Yeah, so he's referring to uh, the webisode, the very first webisode, the Red Ninja that uh -huh. you can play. Uh, he's 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 there for like maybe two or three frames. It takes it like, yeah. just a couple seconds. And it's really easy to miss because the joke is that Asian Carr was summoned to Valhalla because uh, he was about to eat poison chocolate. That's what everyone says. But that wasn't the case. He wanted to get the chocolate, but he was about to be assassinated in the process. So, you know, Vida pulled him out before that happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, Samu, so what's really interesting, and this is like, this is pulling from a really, really old source that I I wish there was a way to recover it because there's a lot of old things in, uh, in the game that no longer exist. Like you can't access it anymore. You can't visually show it anymore. And it's kind of, it's kind of frustrating because it's like, I, I, I can refer to it, but it's basically just me saying words from my memory. But back in the day, right, in the original Heroescape website, there was a little sub-tab, it was uh, online character tips, and you could click on that, and it had, like, little trivia for each of the different characters and how to play them and stuff like that. But, like, it would tell you different, like, facts about the world and about the characters. And they said that Samu is from a group of ninjas called the Twilight Clan. And so if you've ever seen that name before, the Twilight Clan at any point, that's where that comes from, is that Isamu is one of the group of one of the members of that organization. And that was it. We didn't get anything from them. We didn't get anything from that. So it's like if they do a group of ninja, the Twilight Clan would be a really good place to pull from. There's Twilight Clan? Old, yeah. Yeah. It's an old reference made uh, back in the day. And I mean, I've been digging the internet. I've been trying to find a way to get those old online character tips somewhere. And yeah, it's just, it's only, it's honestly just a, a word of mouth at this point and hoping that at some point we can get a good access to that because those are, those are really cool stuff that they, they talk about all sorts of stuff there. So. I miss I miss reading that, you know. So, right. okay, but, uh, it was pretty good info. Yeah, yeah, no, a little, uh, it, it's good. Uh, Demon Hunter, good, good for you to know like a lot of a lot of that a lot of that hidden lore. Um, so did you? That's Paul. That's Paul Tompkins. That's Gearnex. That's he, he. Do you guys remember him from ScapeCon? Oh, Paul yeah, Tompkins. Yeah. He's the one that I just literally had the battle video against. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, Gear Next on the forums. So shout out to Paul. Excellent. Like, thank, yeah. Thank he's, you for the comments. He, he's the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he literally when we were talking to him, he had the hard or the the hard copy of Thorman's journal. Like he literally was carrying it around with him, what? and like he had printed out the PDFs and like like he is a lore guy too. Like for sure. Oh no way! Yeah. That's yeah. wild. Nice. There you go. But that, going back to that point. That's crazy because if you do watch that first little webisode before their little commercial, it, it's it, Isamu's there. So mm -hmm. since Isamu saw his target being teleported away, did he somehow find a way to join Utgar's ranks himself? Or was that Utgar using a known, you know, not assassin, but also a known like like opponent? of right. a person that another general physically brought, you know? So mm -hmm. what, I don't, the, did the lore even, I don't even think the lore closed that loop itself. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that they could talk about and maybe the Twilight Clan summoned Utgar themselves. Like maybe they asked him, you know, to go. And I think Isamu does seem like the kind of guy who like wants to finish the job. So he's like, hey, Utgar summoned me so I can go to Valhalla and kill my Mark. So that, that could have been too like, self-inflicted trans transportation to Valhalla. I don't know, that's uh, that's uh, very uh, far-fetched and I don't know if that's really true, but he literally saw him disappear. So how right. much of a coincidence is it that he himself was called to Valhalla? I mean, well, now, Utgar now, probably now might have saw it yeah. and then just like, okay, I'll, yeah. I'll take him because he's already ready to go. If you if you remember our, our second discussion from last week that uh, in Carmine uh, gave us was you know, to remember those left behind. Mm -hmm. So, like, if if Isamu did in fact see his target disappear in thin air, then that would have caused that paradox to exist of where Isamu is now aware that people can disappear. And then, of course, if, sure. if if the, in the future of Earth and in, in the year 2210, they somehow have a way to uh, uh, affect, like, figure out what's going on, and then like interact with that, you know, dimensional portal, you know, they'd be like, hey. Uh, we want in, you know. <laughs> For yeah. Because, sure. so. like you said, that is the future. That's two hundred years in the future yeah. from now. So, yeah. so no, they couldn't pick up on the energy spike that they got from the Valhalla portal. Right. 
And Jason, were you showing something there? Yeah, so the Internet Archive has chunks of the old Heroescape.com website on it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to have the piece you're looking for where you click on the characters and give them information. But it's got a good chunk of the website on there, including all the oh, yeah. pictures of, Thor of the journals and whatnot. So, I've been digging. I've been digging through the Internet Archive for for a little bit. I, I, I just I want to know where those online character tips went because I know they got rid of it when they. So when they got rid of it, it was the OG site. So back uh, prior to the release of Swarm of the Morrow. So that was within the years of 2004, 2006 they had that online character tips and that's when they mentioned the twilight clan that's when they mentioned all these things it was before swore on the morrow came out and then when they switched sites they just got rid of that tab and then it was just like hello wait uh don't do that like where'd it go <laughs> and it just you know knew what happened to it and i think if you go if you use the compendium that's on the hero scapers site you can see all the things that were mentioned in the online character tips like it talks about uh talks about me bergsaw being uh, you know actually tried to uh, rebel against sneak oxaw and it talks about the raptorians and the you know the vipers using their talents weapons all those little details those were all on the original site and they got rid of that portion of it and i'm like oh, well, wow. why, why'd you do that <laughs> that was good stuff <laughs> Yeah, they didn't have the hard drives. We didn't have terabytes back then. I know, they didn't have terabytes back then. You know, that's insane. So they were like, ah, scrap it, shred it, put it away, destroy it, who cares? We're not bringing this game back. <laughs> <laughs> so Unbeknownst to them, but be no yeah. this is to us. Right. <laughs> At least now in the future. Now, if we want to continue, because we're like, ah, uh, just... A little shy of two We're, hours, so we have a bit more yeah. time to, to talk about things. So, now as far as Chris's question for this weekend, it really um, it isn't a lore theory thing. It's more just an actual question. It's about it's about him basically telling us to explore some of some of the journals uh, that that were written by um, by. And I'm I'm getting a couple of misspelling names. Is Thor 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 Thorgrim? No, no, Thor Mum. Thor Mum. Thor Mum. Thor Mum. Yeah. Thor Thor Mum. Okay. I I I know that because I I have actually like I I downloaded the PDF and it says one name one way and then it says it another and I'm just like what what what. what uh, it was misspelled it? and one of the files was misspelled. <laughs> yeah. And so through through these journals through these prophecies the these these original journals and prophecies of the game. Um, Chris pointed out um, some things when it comes to the the 15 wellsprings, 15 amulets, and wanted us to discuss that. And if if you remember, Jeremy, what was what was the original question he was he was saying? So he, he was asking like specifically why 15? Like what you know are these omens? Are these triggers? Are these gates? Like to explore he, that. He, he, he specifically wanted us to consider the idea that you know this is going to be the central element of the overall story, like so right. discussed in prophecy in detail, like why is it why how are they all connected and what 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 is it why does it refer to fifteen in particular? And so, and so as, as a group, he wanted us just to explore this a bit and he, let me bring this up and let me just read. It's, it's going to be central like central overarching <clears throat> plot, right and. Everything. And if you're not, if, you, if you're watching this or listening to this via podcast, if you're not familiar with these uh, journal entries, you can download them online through like heroescapers.com and such. And yeah, they got rescued before they got deleted. Right. And, and it said Th Thorman's journal. And uh, these are part of um, so the journal entries uh, 10 through 20 here. I'm going to read here. And what we'll actually do um, in the following weeks to come. Uh, just because these are interesting and and for people who might not know much about the lore and and the backstory of what we have up here escape so far we'll probably go through through all these journal entries that were given to us just to explore what they could mean for age of Nation. but just for tonight we're just going to read uh these couples that that refers to these uh to the number 15 which is apparently uh the the question uh, to the answer 42 if anybody knows that reference and <laughs> and so what uh, what I'm going to do is um, start this here I think what it where does it say I think it's journal entry 12, 12 right that this, starts. this specifically is the vision 
Right. Uh, yep. Do you... Let's see here. Uh, do you mind, Ben, if... Do you want to read 12? For sure. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> Oops. I'm going to try and expand <clears throat> this. Too, All right, this is a journal entry number 12. Jandar shared his vision about the wellsprings. This is obviously him sharing his vision about the wellsprings. There are six known wellsprings on Valhalla. I recently discovered the seventh in northern Nostraland. There are 15 small chambers around each wellspring. When a wellspring is first discovered, 14 chambers are empty and one chamber contains an amulet. I believe from my vision that these chambers represent the 15 wellsprings on Valhalla and that one amulet will be found in each wellspring upon its discovery. Possession of these amulets is critical, for in my recent visions, Utgar had gained possession of all 15 amulets with catastrophic results. Right. And so that's, that's journal entry 12. Mm. And let's see, what, which one talks about them next? I, I think, is it uh, 13? Yeah, 13, 12, 13, 14. All right, go ahead and read 13, Ben. <clears throat> Around each well, so this is uh, journal entry number 12. This is Jan Dar continuing uh, his explanation about the revelations. Around each wellspring are several slightly raised panels with ancient runes. The runes inscribed on two side-by-side -side panels show a circle of swirling, ro swirling rocks with a star at its center. When Valkyrie places one hand on each of these panels and concentrates, his visions become more realistic, more vivid, and intense. The key is to continue pressing these panels and concentrating, for this will open a portal through which powerful heroes and armies from other worlds and eras may enter. As the portal opens, a spiral of crystals and rocks will rise from the wellspring, swirling higher and higher in a circular pattern. A bright blue light will pour through the center of the portal. The Valkyrie must quickly fly into this light and through the portal, then use his telekinetic power to bring the hero or army through the opening. These heroes and armies from other worlds are strong and powerful and provide a great source of reinforcements. All the Valkyrie who wish to join us in the fight, in our fight against Uskar, Utgar, must begin bringing in these critical allies. And this is the, it seems like the last one. Yeah, conclu yeah. conclusion, yeah, 14. Journal entry number 14. It says, gender concluded, my recent visions show Utgar placing one of the 13 amulets in each chamber of a wellspring. He forces a captive human to press his hands against two panels, against the two panels. A portal opens to the planet Earth and the next event is so horrific that it sends the shivers of fear through my entire being. A horde of Morrow and their minions fly through the portal. Earthbound and feverish to invade and conquer. We must not, we will not allow these events to occur. I believe that the Valkyrie who possessed the 15 ambulance will gain the ability to control his visions and thus be able to invade other planets via portals, via portals. Likewise, a Valkyrie who possesses all the ambulance will be able to return all heroes and armies to their home planets. You must relay this information only to the only to Valkyrie, who swear their allegiance in this war against Utgar. These are my orders. And I like that deep voice because you just sound so Jandar-like when you say that. So it's just, <laughs> that was intense. Like when I first reread that, I was like, "Woof!" Like, and that's you could see how they could branch that and even make that the Age of Annihilation arc because. Right. When I was reading through these journals, it's like I want I want more of this content. I want to see more wellsprings being found, and like they left us at seven, half of the wellsprings, and maybe even in, in what was it, Battle for the Underdark, they might have released the, uh, like introduced another wellspring, but even then, it's it's eight, and so there's still so many more wellsprings to be found, and that's also another like gotta catch them all, gotta collect them all, you know. And there's 15 amulets. What are all these amulets of power? And every single one. If it's an amulet of power, it might have a special ability. And I think we've already seen some in the um, in the glyphs. Maybe we've seen some of the ancient amulets from the wellsprings in the glyphs. And that's another part of the lore too, but these 15 amulets sound crazy. And I never knew 
that there was a possible way of getting these, you know, heroes back to where they came from. Right. And so that could be really one of the biggest parts of the story is them fighting for the ambulance, fighting for the wellspring still, and somehow the, it gets elevated, it just becomes more intense. Like more wellsprings are captured, more wellsprings are being fought over. And yeah, that's, that's, I mean, it's so open-ended that's like, why not make that where they're going with this? So right. this is my take on it. Yeah, and that's one of the things I pulled from those, when I read those journal entries like a long time ago when, when drafting the scripts for seasons one, two, and three for TOV, is uh, kind of taking the, um, the kind of the, the necessary uh, steps towards giving like some type of uh, character arc within some of these characters about not really wanting to be there, you know, especially those that aren't native to Valhal who want to return home eventually after the war. And and just, you know, to give just to give them a sense of uh, personality. And so that's one of the things I pulled from. And it's it's quite a systematic how you have to actually pull and draw people. It's not just a wave of the hand and woohoo, I got a wellspring magic and boom, boom, everything appears. You know, mm -hmm. it, 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 it takes at least with these uh, wellsprings, there, there is there is method to uh, what you have to do. Now there could be other wellspring wellsprings that do things differently because personally, and and this is just this is just me. I mean, there could only be 15 wellsprings, period. But I would expand the story to where these could be 15 wellsprings that like house like 15 amulets, but there's other wellsprings that um, maybe signify you know different things or different places. But. Yeah, it's um, I, I think when it comes to Age of Annihilation, not just the Wellsprings, but these amulets will probably play a a role into how, how things are, uh, what what things are happening, whatever these amulets can do, or who's in control of them uh, as well. I kind of want to get your guys' take on what what it really meant when it said that Utgar used a captive human to place his hands on mm -hmm. the panels. And I was thinking initially, oh yeah, that's because he had to open a portal to Earth and obviously humans from Earth, but then where did that human come from? Like, there had to be some portal open to Earth for an Earthling to come through. And what she So meant. I just, hmm, human, not Earthling. That is, that's true, <laughs> you got me there. Well, yeah, but which, which one? Is it a human that uh, I, you might have captured, like Drake Alexander himself? Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking. But then also it's like, did, could Utgard not open a portal to Earth if he didn't have a human? Like, what was the significance of having a human put his... I don't know. I just think that was... That caught my attention. I don't know yeah. yep. why. Well, I don't remember the exact terminology, but... I know within the franchise of the Halo, um, Halo games, um, you always need a, a human to activate the Halo ring. Mm -hmm. So it might be something like that where there is something special because because we, as who we are right now, are humans. We always have to make Earth the center of attention uh, and nothing else. Mm -hmm. So. And by making humans the key to activating the wellsprings, like just like I was saying in Halo, having a human activate the Halo ring, um, you know, you kind of it's the extra that extra, you know, thing that you need um, that isn't just an amulet. You know, you need a Valkyrie, you need the amulet and you need a human. Um, so it's it's I mean, it's a lot of power. It's a lot of power to be able to uh, bring in heroes and armies, um, and you and use concentration of and your will to to teleport people from any place in time. Like that's a lot. It's asking a lot. So to have a magic amulet and a magical being and a and a simple human, um, <laughs> you know it. Yeah, I mean you need all you need all these MacGuffins to to, to do this. <laughs> to, Could it be to continue that, the story. Um... <laughs> yeah. Because in the let's see, 13 there where it describes the Valkyrie describes the, their, their visions become more real as they kind of focus more on them 
what if you had a native inhabitant of the planet who had memories of said planet, and therefore they actually already had real like memories or visions that were re truly real, and that allowed a faster opening mm. to their particular planet, assuming they had the power to do so. And therefore, whereas the Valkyries are kind of have half the power and half the vision, if you have all 15 ambulance, you now have 100% power in the form of the ambulance and a 100% power, 100% vision in terms of the real memories of said creature, whatever it may be. And, yep. And that Utgar chose to invade Earth because I don't believe Utgar has any humans in his army, so they're kind of like the main enemy of Utgar. Isn't hmm. Izamu is a human? Isn't maybe yeah. it's like one. Isamu is, and then uh, okay. Sir Hawthorne. And you and you got like uh, the couple. the the regiment of the foot, right? That's uh, it's Einar. Yeah. Oh, is that Einar? The British, the British mm -hmm. survivor. Okay, okay, okay. They're Einar. Okay. They're just red coated. <laughs> red coated, yeah. They look like they're Utgar affiliates. Yeah, so there's a few, there's a few humans. I, I mean, like I said, the story-wise. That, uh, that's the thing, though, too. Those almost seem like reactionary. Like Sir Hawthorne, literally, to battle with the Knights oh, of Wesson and one. Sir Gilbert, and like they're literally like, and then Isamu, like he's the only other human, but he's there. I'm pretty sure by his own accord, he wants to assassinate Agent Carr. Like, and so I think that's a a, a piece of it too. And that was a, a real good point, Jason. Though, like it, at, when Jandar was like explaining the portals, he said, "When the portal opens, you got to go jump through it." as opposed to the portal being opened by somebody who's been on Earth and it's just this massive opening where armies can just pour through. It was this little tiny thing, you gotta go in there and use your teleconnect powers to bring him back there. It's like, that wasn't happening with Utgar. Utgar was just like, we're going full tilt. We're all, we're gonna invade Earth. And so that that's that's probably, you know, not, not that I'm saying that's accurate, but that's really good train of thought is like, maybe that was it. Like it's drawing from the experience of the person touching the panels so and for I, sure I, i'm thinking back to to the original like animated trailer when uh like jandar um brings in like drake alexander and you, you see this animated version of what i assume would be a wellspring then a cool. wellspring chamber um although it looked like it was outside it's i i don't know but <laughs> uh there was really no panel there it just like he just like boom flash of uh, magic and then he's and then flash of magic then he appears right next to jandar well so, he says well he says in the journal that he has to step through the portal does he not yeah 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 so yeah, as he, so i'm so within within that context of that commercial um that animated commercial is that when when after Alexander comes out of it. I literally just watched this, so that's why it's so fresh for me. Um, <laughs> as soon as as soon as uh, Drake Alexander comes out, you can see Jandar um, coming out of what the portal. I would assume what the portal was, um, and and so so he's probably already done that, teleported to whatever center this area is, um, and it teleported him to a different area of Valhalla to summon all of the armies that he needs. And so I almost I almost want to say that when he when they activate a portal, he's doing multiple teleportations at once, not just one at a time. Right. And, and it's I can't to wait. Remember I can't wait to those, make an underground uh, wellspring chamber now. That's gonna those be those webisodes. Design. Those webisodes are predate the journal entry. So mm -hmm. and they're different writers and they're different creators. Mm -hmm. uh, all the web every webisode that was created was from a third party company. Right, the third party group. So whatever they did, I mean, is at best a rough interpretation of the main story. What, <laughs> and then the, their journals were written by people behind the game itself. So there will be discrepancies. You're gonna know this. Wait, that doesn't line up. Yeah. No, it, for sure. There's a lot yeah, of things that don't line up. The people. It's the still people fun to try to connect everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> like the people who did the webisodes did not communicate with the people who wrote the journals. The two different groups. And no, you but that. you're gonna see the disconnect. But I, I think I think you by looking at the commercials as a basis, as be like, okay, this is what visually what this is a cool thing to look at. What can we build off of this? Plus, with all the insider information we have at the time, um, so I mean, there is there is a lot here. I didn't know this as a kid, and I didn't know about this 
five years ago I didn't know about this. Mm -hmm. So this is so cool to see that there is such, you know, strong lore that is like, I mean, there is a beam of light in the sky. So, I mean, there is that, but, um, but wellsprings are a different type of, um, you know, MacGuffin than, I mean, the amulets are basic MacGuffins, but wellsprings are cool. Like that's different. Um, you know, water, um, is, is always, I mean, has anyone seen Frozen 2? Yes. No. Water has memory. Yeah. So, um, water is special, uh, <laughs> which is always so cool. And, but, um, and, yeah. I think the basis is that in in because the the game has always had the loose loose basis in North Norse mythology, mm -hmm. and all of all of Odin's wisdom comes from a uh, Mimis Brunir. I don't know if I'm saying that right because it's a very very strong Nordic word, but uh, it's it's this well wisdom. He drink everything that he knows, everything all his knowledge comes from drinking a wellspring, and there's there's like three main wellsprings in Nordic myth that you can you can learn about, and uh, they talk about them throughout the storyline. So, you know, loosely based on Norse mythology, using the wellsprings, and especially since they mentioned it as the source of Odin's wisdom, it would be like, yeah, you know, the wisdom of all the worlds or the, of the universe itself, drinking water. That's how you learn about the world and the, and the, and the different planets and stuff like that. So it would make a lot of sense. But, uh, yeah, they, uh, it was interesting because when they, when they dropped the amulet references and stuff like that, like the, the 15 amulets and having to recover those, there's actually a, a lesser known reference to those amulets that may 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 not be have not been brought up. But this reference is actually in the character bio for Sujoa, the, the giant bug. Mm. So uh, I actually went ahead and pulled that up. And I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I'm gonna read the part that's important. And it says uh so you know, it talks about this uh young priestess of the moon who goes into this cavern and she's with Sujoa, which is her pet fur fly. So, you know, we know, uh, at least from this, this context, that the, the, the Kairi that live in the south befriend bugs because <laughs> we got spiders and, and, and all this stuff. So, so the, the Takal and Kairi are friends with bugs. And so she's talking to her pet fur fly. And uh, yeah, this one's, it says this one's a friend. And then it mentions something tells me we are not the first to be down here after all. Sujoa, look at this. It is beautiful. The priestess raises a yellow stone attached to the end of a silver chain. Carefully, she clasps the amulet around her delicate neck. And the moment she does that, she then goes and partakes of the water and then has her first vision. So hmm. it's like, you know, this this uh, sequence of events that's in Sujoa's bio refers to how, how wellspring powers are obtained. It, you put the amulet on your neck, you drink the water, and then you have the visions. And then... When you start using the you you practice that more and more with the runes you learn how to control those visions and figure out how to summon these characters so and they're they're saying that if you have all 15 you get ultimate control of those visions and basically send anyone anywhere that you want so you, you basically know, ultimate, get ultimate travel. an instruction manual downloaded into your brain otherwise they'd be like okay i have an amulet on why do i get this feeling like i need to drink water now you know? Yeah, it's oh, it's, it's very. I'm being telepathically mm -hmm. told what to do. Was that, was yep, that exactly. referring to Aquila? Yeah, yeah. It's it doesn't okay. say her name, but it does mm -hmm. because Sujo being Aquila's character, or yeah. being part of Aquila's army, uh, the assumption is that that character is referencing uh, Aquila's first encounter with the Wellspring, which Sick. is interesting because she encountered it when she was a kid, and yeah. then we meet her in Thorman's journal as an adult. So that means she's been. She's been messing with the Wellsprings for years now, like far before the Rise of the Valkyrie and things like that. Like she knew about the Wellsprings far before uh, uh, all the other characters. So, which I mean, I mean, like I said, that's plot stuff that they, they didn't even get to explore because, you know, once it transferred over to the Wizards of the Coast, they started focusing on the D&D stuff. But like, yeah, uh, Aquila has been really interesting because I think she's had, right. she definitely had, they had plans to, you know, explore more of the Wellspring power based on her her, her descriptions and stuff like that. We need more bugs. We absolutely <laughs> need more, just need more Aquila stuff. Just, yes, yes, please, now, thank you. <laughs> and if you think about it too, Aquila brought the dwarves who were like a pretty hefty faction in mm -hmm. 
so that's pretty interesting too like and we never got that lore like where did those dwarves come from like i mean like like fleshed we, out yeah fully fleshed out yeah they 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 weren't able to release the oh, bio okay and, and zabel says it's not a bug it's a it's a figure or image okay <laughs> i i say that very loosely just because it yeah no it's a get it. it's an inside <laughs> joke so i know i know the reference it's, okay it's a comment it's a comment that's usually made in reference to like video games uh, uh whenever Whenever certain games are like broken or something like that, and they're saying it's not a bug, it's a feature. <laughs> She's punning on. It. She's punning on it. it. It's now. not a bug. It's a I figure. Get yeah. It now. Still, I we need What's more bugs. Way? How are you doing? We need, we need more bugs who are miniatures, who are figures. Absolutely. All the above. I was, good, that was, I was good fun. with all the video game references I make. I didn't even. I didn't even see that. But I, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, th thank you, Zabel. Thank you. No, that was that was fun. And Jason, are, are you holding back something? Because I, I think, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I can tell when you want to say something. Not really. Okay. Okay. No, nothing to no, no, The question I still have in my, hi, my mind when it pertains to Age of, Annihilation, Age of Annihilation, what is getting annihilated here? Our brains. <laughs> yes. For real. <laughs> what exactly <laughs> is being annihilated? We, our wallets. Our wallets. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our patience. <laughs> our patience. Everything but patience what too. they actually want to be annihilated is being annihilated. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, in terms of story, uh, it's just that's one thing that just keeps on like is is land being annihilated? Is there a, a faction that's been annihilated, or is just is, is everything on the verge of an is age of annihilation means everything's about to be annihilated or has things right. been annihilated it's it's just one of the things that's just in my story making mind that i'm just like mm, mm, i need to know i need to know, I need to know. So it'll be interesting when it all comes out. And I, I know, uh, and Carmine, Chris, I know he's got great, I, I know their design, they've got great things planned. So it's just mm -hmm. a, it's a wait and see type thing. I, I kind of wanted to say this earlier. Sorry to cut you off. Oh, go ahead, but these daily updates like make me like excited. Like I, I, like, I want to see. And then like I wake up and it's, I'm on Pacific Standard Time. So if I wake up at, you know, ten. It's one one o'clock over there. You know, right, right. Yeah, it's one o'clock over there. So it's it's already been released for hours, and then just come in and uh, hop on the discussion with you guys because a lot of nine times out of ten, you guys would have already talked about it, and I'm just coming and reading the information because I'm waking up at you know eight nine o'clock over here, and it's already three hours ahead where you guys are. So mm -hmm. just it, literally like I'm excited to 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 get it and then like i've been posting it to my instagram and i'm just like excited to like read it and then just have my own thoughts about it it's just it's just a really exciting time because i've been back in the game for two years but i can just only imagine for people who have been in the game since 2005 haven't stopped right. like how awesome this is for the news like it's awesome to me it's awesome to you guys and i know you guys you know haven't been the whole you know 10 years you guys might have got back i know ryan you've been You've probably been in it forever and jason i don't know maybe if you got back into it but i'm a, a returning player forever so yeah, yeah for sure i'm a returning player and it's super exciting to me so yeah. i just can't even imagine the anticipation and the excitement that these people have been that that literally got the first rise of valkyrie with sparkly water and have been playing it forever i, 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 got, for yeah, I have sure. that set yeah i got the yeah. og set now i told my sister i've been telling my sisters about it because uh you know at the very beginning, when the game first came out, they were the first people I played against. You know, mm. I, I I made them play against me, and then yeah. you know, when they got bored, I I I, had, I would play with my friend down the street. But like that was that was the thing. So they know about Heroes. They've known about it for a while now. They knew how much I was passionate about it, and they they uh, uh we talked about it all the time with them. So like when I was able to message them on August third, I was like, you won't believe what just what I just found out. And they're like, what's that? And I'm like, Heroes Group's coming back. They're like, no way. Like they knew. They didn't. I didn't really have to explain anything because they already knew that this was something oh, I was into. Was. They remembered. Yeah. They remembered how sad I was when it discontinued, <laughs> and and now they're like, oh my gosh, it's coming back. And I'm like, yeah. And so it's it's just this really cool thing. And and now I tell them like, guess what? I get to talk about it on Twitch. 
where I could talk about in these videos and stuff like that. And they're like, wow, you're actually like behind the, the development process, like talking about it as a news format and, and things like that. Like this, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. this being able to broadcast it out there and, and share it yeah. with the world. Like that's a new uh, layer to my HeroScape experience. When back in the day, it was just playing it or, I mean, and, and, and I think I've brought it up before, like my, I, I started writing a fanfic on the forums uh, back in like 2010 and that was that point that fanfic that i wrote was what got me invited to join uh, c3v and write the bios for those characters like they read that fanfic and they're like this is really good stuff do you want to write for us and i was like uh yes like like i i never even thought that would be a possibility and it's like you know this game has inspired so much of my creative potential that seeing it come back, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited to see what, what I can take with it from there, from the new stuff. So, absolutely. And It'd coming in two of half hours, I think we will we will wrap for tonight. And I think I think definitely the journal entries we'll have to explore in the future. Talk about them. Yeah. So see see what see what we can glean from them. If if Chris has anything to add, you know, in the following weeks, um, mm -hmm. and uh, if we can connect things with Age of Annihilation and see how accurate we are in the future. Uh, all, all the better, and uh, we just again thank everybody for listening to the to, to the TOV live live stream. And if you're watching this on on the uh, podcast audio, um, you can find the video version of this on Tales of Valhalla YouTube. Just type in the YouTube search bar Tales of Valhalla. All kinds of stop motion animated content there, as well as the video version of this podcast. If you like to see our smiling mugs on the screen. We'd be happy to uh, do that. But I just want to give a shout out again to the people who commented on the live stream tonight, Ian, um, and Ian, uh, Marion, and Zay. Thank you guys uh, for commenting. Always appreciate the comments, questions, the, the jokes. Always love the jokes. Because we're just funny guys. <laughs> yeah, no, we're nerds. What are you, what are you, what are you saying? And I might as nerds well. Nerds can be funny too. Yeah, nerds can be funny too. Exactly <laughs> to ourselves, you know. And that's that's the it's the inside jokes that count. Anyway, so how about we close? And I'm just gonna uh, go go around this uh, this panel and get you guys give your final th thoughts, final thoughts, as well as uh, who you are and 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 websites and pages and press all the buttons, people. Press all the buttons. Subscribe, <laughs> follows, and all that stuff. Uh, ben, go ahead. Um, final thoughts. Um, if you haven't read the journals, go ahead and download those and read them because it's it's really a fun read and it's just expounding on the game you're playing. Um, also those. Thorman's journals, uh, quite a few of them were written by Sergeant Drake Alexander. So if you like Sergeant Drake Alexander as a character, it has his point of view for a lot of these journal entries too. Like they're literally from the pen of Sergeant Drake Alexander. And it's just a lot of insight into the world. And you could almost like picture it for yourself the way like the authors of these uh, journals describe the world, describe the characters. And it's funny how a lot of these uh, at the compendium entries draw from Thorman's journals. And it's just funny to like reread the stuff, but in the context of the journal is even more awesome because then you're seeing what's happening, you know, before and after. And when he's describing these units and how he went down, down into the basement of Vidar's castle and there's a whole network of Solborg, you know, manufacturer operations. And I just never knew that before. And so just a bunch of like these little tidbits of information that are just so awesome to know that next time you sit at the table with your buddy, you're like, oh yeah, well this guy, you know, in the lore, he's blah, 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 which makes it just that much more interesting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so just the lore is real fun. Check out the compendium too. Bunch of entries, bunch of stuff about the terrain, like not the physical game terrain, but like the lands of, you know, the planets and the lands of Valhalla and just a lot of the geography and just a, a bunch of information and it'll really be beneficial and just just really enlightening to read uh, just a bunch of the lore. And if you have already, like join in these discussions, join the live. It's it's a really good time just talking about this game that we all love and this information that's 
Like it's it's been there too, and it's just awesome that, like I said, uh, Paul he was carrying around Thorman's journal, a hard copy. So there's people that have you know really deep into the lore too, and I bet they have their own, you know, uh, takes on stuff like that. Just like Paul, he just commented down below, and that was really cool to get a different take on the same you know lore. We're literally reading the same paragraphs, but it's a, somebody's different take, and it's always fresh, a uh, different insight. Man. Um. It, that that was and, that was my yeah. and so uh, I'm uh, MK Plus Ultra Ben, uh, but my channel YouTube channel MK Plus Ultra, my Instagram for all kinds of update and an annihilation age of annihilation updates uh, underscore MK Plus Ultra all one word underscore uh, everyday daily updates on Age of Annihilation, um, bunch of HeroScape content and then also. We will be starting our season four of battles, me and my brother, really soon. So I have one more Escape Con video to get through. It's with Cody, Cleon. So hope you guys can uh, tune in for that. That's next week. And I just uploaded two uh, Escape Con battle videos this week, one against Matt and one against Paul. So go check those out too. Absolutely. Joe. Forward to that one uh, with, with, uh, with Cleon. I look forward to that one. Um, you're in it. You're, I, like I, I've already edited the intro, and you're just like, "Hi, I'm Joe." <laughs> Literally wait. in that voice. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Um, so the Giant Lifeborn Order um, is incredibly exciting for me because it is such a different thing that I could totally be into. Um, you know, I, I like the, the robots and the Morrow, and so to me this kind of feels like the com combination of those two in a way, um, because of how brute force they are and how strong and rooted, literally, they are, um, with the nature, um, and organic, but also such bony and, like, just a f strong brute force, um, you know, but still have magic. Uh, and I love that. I think it's so cool. Um, I can't, I can't wait to show me the cards. <laughs> For the love of God, I'm show me the cards. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited for those. And like, I'm still learning the lore. So, and I, people are loving it. I, I mean, I, I, even, even my current, my current video, I talk about how I called about Q10. Um, I had so many different comments talking about the lore and, and how some things I got wrong and I have to correct it already um, because I don't know it. I'm learning and it's like so cool to learn all this stuff and read all this stuff. Hey, um, hey Joe, my DMs are open. You know. I know they are. I know you and <laughs> you and I will be talking about that very soon. Um, okay. But <laughs> but so I'm excited for all that stuff. Um, and of course. I'm really excited this, to see how are they going to tell this story. I'm not a huge reader. This is probably why it's so new to me. I don't read. Um, I'm a visual guy, so I like watching. That's why I love Tales of Valhalla. Um, it gives me re visual representation of the story, um, right. of a story. So I'm so excited to see if... if What I want to try to get across to us here and the audience is we need to spread the word more than ever because if i really truly be believe and I, I do want to make a separate video about this but i'll, I'll splur it a little bit here um if we don't get this into news people's eyes enough i don't think we'll see as much as we think we will see truly i i don't i don't want to put doubt into it but i i want to be able to say to myself that this is going to get this has to be more popular than it ever ever had had been in the first place right. in order to get the cool things that we really want to see and for me that's more cartoons and more like you know film and movie stuff because it has so much awesome potential um to showcase more than the game um and showing the concept art and seeing all the, the lore that's here explodes my mind but anyway i'll talk about that in something um we'll move on i am joe crazy 3193 please come on by uh and support the channel i'm getting really close to the 300 sub club 
So think about it. Think about it. Do it. Do it now. Next. Mm -hmm. Jeremy. All righty. So final thoughts. I was you the dry the dry and lifeborn order. That is, I want to say, that's Age of Annihilation's answer to the fantasy faction. Because, you know, if you've noticed, they've introduced three specific factions each week, right? They had the, the Dawn Raider Syndicate that had historical humans. Which, by the way, uh, I can't say who, I can't remember who said it, but got my mind blown from the, the Heroescapers Discord. Because, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, Pirate Queen Bonnie and her connection to history. Apparently, the widow is also a pirate from human history. Mm -hmm. uh, her name is uh, Ching Shi, and she was the she was the uh, the, the the best pirate in uh, China seas, the the South China Sea. She was the most oh, wow. notorious pirate of those waters. And the word Shi, so Ching Shi, the word Shi means widow. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense now. Like that's why she's called the widow. And, you know, like, with her Chinese uh, weapons that she's using, she's, you know, she's from China. I'm like, okay, I got you, got you, uh, Dadscaper, I see what you're doing there. So, you know, Dawn Raider Syndicate has an introduction to our history, to, to the historical aspects of Heroescape. You got the, the Ironclad uh, uh, Collective, which is the science fiction segment of Heroescape. And then now the Dry and Lifeborn Order, which is our magic version, our, our fantasy version. So this is their answer to the three, the, the trifecta, the Heroes mm. of the Trifecta. And I think they're going to release these. They're going to give us a chance to, you know, to meet these new elements, these these fresh elements uh, uh, adapted to the game before bringing back the classics, before bringing back what we're, we're more familiar with, because they want us to, show, they want, they want to prove to us that they know what they're doing first by showing us these new units and then bringing things that will add to the older units because you, you know they're not just going to rush into it and be like oh let's bring more morrow let's bring more soulborg it's like well here's what we have these are our, our ideas and we're going to see show you how these mesh in with what what you, what you are expecting and i'm super excited like i mean like i've i've read plenty of dadscapers posts about the character that that he's in charge of and they seem very well thought out he seems to have a lot of passion with his his creation uh doc was the one that created the ironclad collective uh, I haven't really seen anything from him. I'm, I probably gotta go dig and see if he's said anything about them yet. But that's from that's his that's his brainchild. So <laughs> if you're wondering you know, the the the, the sh uh, shift in theme, yeah, that's Doc. Doc created the Ironclad. So you know, are you okay? I hope you're doing okay. Those are some scary looking things. I <laughs> like, but uh, yeah, no, it's just really exciting overall. And and the most important part, uh, Dadscaper said, for those that wanted lore, we are going to get. They're going to give us a massive uh, uptake in story inside of that. So, yeah, and that's that's my main portion. That's what I do for content because, you know, that's my name, Lore Guy. That's what they call me all the time. I'm the Lore Man. So, my name is Jeremy Protoan, uh, Majora's Incarnation on the Heroescapers forum, and I run the Eslam Collate, which is a platform that covers narrative design and lore of video games, video games, and all sorts of things. You can find me on Twitch, you can find me on Twitter, and you can find me on YouTube. And you can DM me anytime you got any lore questions. I got you. I'm totally down to talk lore any day of the week. All right. Jason. All right. I think my last thought is that that one kind of puppy dog wolf thing with the antlers <laughs> is probably the best miniature they've shown off yet. It's the best concept art they've shown <laughs> off yet. Um, that's probably um, going to be the, the frame of, of this YouTube video, too, because that, that is yeah, one of my favorite things. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. So hopefully now we start seeing actual miniatures. I want to start seeing some <laughs> yes. real figures instead of concept art. We got three weeks of concept art. Let's see the next step. I know there's already 10 or so out there. Let's see some of maybe actually see some of these concept art turned into miniatures to kind of just keep that little marketing train going but that's my final thoughts so i'm jason the creator of the tabletop battlefield you can find my content over at tabletopbattlefield.com and legends of caladasia at empireundersiege.com that's a space combat miniatures game yes and oh what was i gonna say yeah okay mine totally blanked out but anyway yes i'm ryan uh, the guy who's made this animated content and what really is important to um, for to make anything to make people like like it comes down to like Star Wars people love the movie they love the story mm -hmm. hence it, you, people made 
tons of money from buying all these uh, all these toys, all these Star Wars toys back then. There's va valuable, practically commodities now. It, it's just it's just crazy. So story is is very important. Yes, you, you do have your hardcore gamers. That story doesn't matter too much. But to really draw people in, you need a strong and compelling narrative to draw them into, and that's that was one of the one of the driving purposes of Tales of Valhalla, uh, for, for that purpose. And I've and I've seen it, and it's it's a wonderful thing to to see when people email me. It's like, oh, I started watching your show. I didn't even know Heroescape was a thing, and I'm getting some I'm getting some for my kids. Wonderful, and so mm. it's it's always great uh, to have that, and that's so it's one of. It's it's one of my main driving motivations to continue creating the show, and it's 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 a great thing. So, for um, for non-canon stuff, and then for the canon stuff that they're going to be making, and maybe somehow tie this non-canon stuff with the canon stuff in the future would be would be fun too. We'll we'll see we'll see. Only time will tell. And so with that, yes, uh, I am on uh, I'm in YouTube Tales of Ahala. Um, type Tales of Ahala in the search bar. We already have season one and two. On YouTube as well as uh, completing season three on Wednesday nights I live stream as well doing the editing of currently it is episode seven of season three and just got done um, putting together all the the raw video uh, stop-motion animation so all that's put together for the episode now I just got to work on audio effects special effects sound effects uh, adjust the the voiceover effect vo voiceover audios uh, movement audios uh, music so we still got there's still there's still a lot of work to do on this one episode <laughs> but uh, and other stuff that I'm probably not even going to mention uh, but uh, I, I do all that I, sh I show um, some of the interworkings of that editing on Wednesday nights so join me uh, on, on the TOV live stream when I do that and with that, I thank you guys again for joining me on these now, what's probably going to be known as TOV Live, TOB, TOV Podcast uh, live streams on, on Sunday nights, uh, talking about everything uh, Heroescape, Age of Annihilation. Wonderful to have you content creators on, and hopefully we'll have other guests on in the future as well to give their thoughts on lore and, and gameplay when it comes to AOA. We'll see. Like I said, only time will tell. And thanks again for the live streaming audience. Uh, all the highs, the questions, it's it's awesome. All the jokes. Please bring on the jokes. It's it's a great thing. <laughs> and and for those who comment on the uh, on the YouTube page, also afterward, we like I said, we read your comments. We we look forward to your comments. So thank you so much for the support. And press all the buttons. All these guys' buttons. Just 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 press press the buttons. Get, get them going. The, the subscribes, <laughs> the follows, the likes, the comments, everything. And with that, uh, thanks again. And yeah, this is how the live stream is probably going to go Sunday. It's probably going to be for two and three, two or three hours now. It's it's it's. Don't expect it to makes get any sense. sleep. Don't expect to get any <laughs> sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and That's why it's going to be a podcast. So people can listen to it in the morning. <laughs> when they're getting ready for work. It, right. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 well on its way. We're getting that set up. So so only time will tell. And I said it the third time, and that's the last time I'll say it. With that, again, thanks everybody. You have a purpose in your life. Find it, pursue it, live it. And we'll see you guys next time. Later. Have a good night. Yeah. Hey. Join in. <laughs>